Welcome to this episode of Hanjo Talks. With me and Michelle Bowen, we are talking about fun, mm, parenting with, with a child, and also doing spiritual stuff at the same time. And that other thing that happened, manifesting. It's a really good so to guys. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's really fucking long. Um, we had no idea that we went this long. It's been a good conversation, I guess. Be around. Bye. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a reaction podcast with me and Michelle Bone. Um, we are reacting to something that was recorded uh, one week ago due to uh, mysterious circumstances surrounding the original recording. Um, it was deleted in a strange sequence of events. Uh, and it's not a cover-up. So, how are you, Michelle? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, uh, to see us just be completely different. Uh, and <laughs> I imagine, I don't know, I, I think I'm going to disagree with myself a lot. But maybe not. Maybe I'm just great. We'll see. Yeah, let's see what happens. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. And Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hi, Hanzo. I'm well. How are you? I'm pretty good. So I guess uh, we'll start off by introducing Michelle. Uh, what, what do you do for uh, work, Michelle? And, and sort of what what led you to that, that place? Okay, so um, I am a parent empowerment coach and intuitive. And yeah, so I enjoy helping parents recognize and remember freedom through parenting. Um, and what led me to that place was um, I started seeking around 2012. And then I um, got pregnant 2014 and I was like, fuck, I'm fucked. How am I going to continue to spend all this energy seeking? Um, at that time, I didn't look at it as, as that though. I was like, how am I going to continue on this path if I have a child, you know? And then I was really afraid of having a child and what that would do to the path that I thought I was on. And um, then I had her July of 2015. And um, when she turned around two years old, um, I started to realize that I was having reactions and triggers that I thought that I had already looked at and done the work with. And so I was kind of confused as to how I was able to get so fucking angry at the drop of a dime from this cute little beautiful bundle of joy. And <laughs> so hey, and like I feel like that's such a real that's such a real thing where it's like mm, you do you do all this work. And then it's like you're put into a new situation and then like you haven't done any 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 work at all. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like, for, you know, and it's, it's interesting because as I listen to to this right now, you know, <clears throat> something that I've noted that I'm starting to notice that that's that's left out, been left out quite a lot in the past um, conversations, interviews or whatever, is that, you know, it became very loud and noticeable with my daughter, but it was also noticeable with her father. Like that was also a moment like um, his uh, incoming into my life and then him exiting my life was also like kind of like a precursor, like of, 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 you know, wow, you've done all this work for so long. And like, look at this situation here with her, with her father. And then it's like, okay, well then, um, I've done all this work, so I'm just going to cut you out. Hooray. And then it's like, oh, your daughter's like right there. Like, uh, 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 <laughs> you, you, still have, you still have a ways to go before you're fucking free. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, definitely. Uh, it was a lot that was surrounding her in general, like the, 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 the being that led up to her conception, the exiting of that being. And then also, um, yeah, all of that, which ultimately it's everything, right? I I utilize the parent-child dynamic, but like obviously, it's like, like every single thing is it can be used for for the purpose of remembering our freedom. 
Yeah, and I feel like it's uh, uh, it's so real that like the relationships are kind of always a difficult thing to manage. Like I remember in um, like Daniel Ingram's book, it's like um, Master in the Core Teachings of the Buddha. He's like, you know, uh, it's all well and good to you know be getting all these like groundbreaking insights, but like maintain the like human relationships that you have, like the, like and like morality. Uh, being like one like morality mm, concentration and insight and they're like the three factors and it's like morality is like just as important as insight and when you're looking at it from that kind of lens where it's like oh these are the three things that are fundamental to actually like waking up in a real way it's like oh it, morality isn't just like hey be a good person it's like have insight and awareness in all of these different uh situations and like at, while also you know it's like exposing you to way more uh, different things to sort of test what your, uh, like how how powerful your uh, awakening is. Yeah, dude. Because like I know, <clears throat> I know, I know. I, I can't say what I'd be doing or where I'd be without my daughter, but for sure, she actually is what like. There's that you know that desire to be fucking compassionate. Because then there's also like this kind of this this kind of like well. There's no fucking telling where I would be right now without her. Like, my ass, you know, I could have decided, like, fuck the world. I'm just going to go sit and, like, <laughs> like, that's it. Or, you know what I'm saying? There's no telling. It's all happening the way it's meant to. But um, but there's definitely that. That's that's for sure. The, the compassion piece and, like, interacting with humans, you know, without looking down on them or looking down on others for not operating from your level of awareness um for sure for sure yeah i, I feel like that's kind of like the the path of the heart it's like you can you can get enlightened like in the mind and you can get enlightened in the heart and like getting enlightened in the heart is is all about this sort of interconnectedness uh and interconnectedness <laughs> is like is relationships it's like seeing how yeah we're we're all sort of manifest uh mm in sort of the this this interconnected matrix which doesn't really make sense in in sort of conventional conceptual terms uh where it's all just kind of love um yeah so yeah i definitely uh, uh feel like mm, that's like a super important thing and it's like it's it's kind of the reason why i feel like when it comes to enlightenment it's like you can get some level of enlightenment uh but you need actually need morality to go further uh, because otherwise you're just not you're not connecting into the heart and you're not connected into the interconnectedness, which is just like a huge area to get get insight into. Mm. Not to mention it's like nice and good. <laughs> yeah. And I like I think I think that that's like why it's kind of like one of the trippiest. I think that may be one of the trippiest um, parts or things about using the, the term enlightened because it's like it, it kind of conveys that like you're done or like it's over or like completion or like you know what i'm saying but then there's also like this infinite shit happening where like it's forever expanding and like you know what i'm saying so i'm just trippy man trippy. yeah it, it's i mean if you believe in like the uh, illusion of a self then you know getting enlightened makes sense but not not so much otherwise uh but it's still you know it's a useful you know it's like hey this thing happened <laughs> you know it's kind of like a, a good good for conventional um, explanation what are the what are the uh, right like like like, like what, what are the word uh, do you think what, what are you? <laughs> exactly it's like yeah uh, you know we we describe things to other humans in our human terms for human mm -hmm. stuff uh mm -hmm. that's just how it is um yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um i looked into that a bit um which caused me to look into myself a bit more than i had already spent doing the past few years and um i ended up seeing that actually having a child was a fucking major blessing and that um <clears throat> i could keep reading all the books if i wanted to keep going to retreats or I could uh, really look at what my daughter was showing me, <laughs> what, what my daughter was showing me with every single fucking trigger. And I could create certain um, methods, if you will, to um, uh, 
bring oneness back into the equation or remember oneness because she didn't seem to be have forgotten it so so um so, so just to like uh frame this right in my head it's like you were seeking then you had your daughter and then two years in you're like wait a minute i could like frame my entire like path around like around parenting and my daughter because like this is actually like mm, you know this is great like fuel for personal development is that is that is that right um i i don't think that there was ever a time where i like sat or like whatever i i don't think there was ever a time where i actually was like i'm going to frame anything around it was actually like i was really still heavily into my mentors and and you know my my teachers at that time and it was like i had no i didn't i had i didn't feel like i had any other option like because there was just, it was very evident that I was, you know, it's like you, there's no separation between what's triggering you, whether it's a, your mom or whether it's your boyfriend or a friend. And, and if it's your child, it's like, if you're really still heavily seeking and, and really following closely at any mentors or teachers, what they're saying is going to need to be applied to your child as well. And so it's like, I didn't, I, it just became what had to happen. And, you know that's what that's just the sequence of events it's like fuck like <laughs> dude where i'm gonna have to... <laughs> and so then and then <clears throat> so then uh so what actually happened was um there was a part of me that wanted to write at one point a, a long time ago i wanted to write a book about um wh what it's like to raise your child without spanking them but um but this was before I had even everything that I just said had even gone down. And I realized that shit, I'm going to have to apply everything that I'm applying elsewhere with this relationship as well. But before then, there was a time when I wanted to write a book about, you know, the, 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 the magic of raising your child without spanking them, without using physical um, <clears throat> punishment. Right. And the reason that that I wanted to do that was because. I'm of Jamaican descent um, and uh, I'm of a culture where um, physical spanking is, is, um, is, is, is common. And, and so, um, and so I just thought it was cool. I was the first, I was the, f my daughter is one of the first, I think she's the first on both sides of my family. It is not one of the first for sure who has never been spanked, you know what I'm saying? And so I just remember thinking like, this is fucking wild. Like you listen, you have your moments, but then it's like, you listen, everything's fine. It's not, nothing's getting out of hand. This is crazy, you know? And so I, but, but I couldn't, I wasn't clear at the time that I had the inspiration to, to do that. I wasn't clear enough for anything to fucking come through, you know what I'm saying? So at the time that things did start to come through, um, I had already started utilizing our relationship as the, um, <clears throat> just utilizing it in a way that would aid in my um, clearing out a lot of the limited beliefs and energetic blockages that I was still holding at the time. So um, it, it's like, it kind of like, there was no plan or plot, plot and plan um, for this to be, what it is right now it just ended up being just like how it unfolded and then it was like oh um i don't think that this was just for me and me alone so <laughs> so yeah so. and and from from past conversation with you it seems like yeah uh it's like yeah it, it all just unfolded and there wasn't a plan and there wasn't like hey like i'm gonna do this uh because i don't think that's ever been a thing for anyone uh maybe it has um but Mm, there were like a bunch of like uh you know like uh god building you up to it happening <laughs> like yeah, in pray sure. profound ways sure. like uh sure. yeah like yeah like this idea for a book and then you were like you you said you wanted to be like a parent mm. mm -hmm. yeah so it's like it's like you kind of knew that in the future it was gonna happen when you were in the past yeah yeah, I even, I mean, and then, then then when you look back, it's like you, you manifested everything. You manifested a group of beings who had a particular program that had that mix, um, you know, spirituality with entrepreneurship. You manifested that container to help, you know, it's like then you start to look at all of the things that that you manifested that, you know what I'm saying, or that happened. <clears throat> and it's like, it's like, is there something bigger here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and 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 I felt yeah the more like noticing synchronicities mm, on like a wider scale and also on a smaller scale 
it really it really is just sort of like your heart like telling you like hey like it's all it's all it's all been planned out but like in a in a good way <laughs> and it's so funny that you say that because you know what's coming up now is that like uh one of my favorite mentors and teachers is robert adam and he you know one of the things that used to trigger the fuck out of me in his book silence of the heart is um i mean from a few years ago it used to trigger me i used to be like what do you mean everything is preordained like dude i'm a creator i create my own reality don't Everything else you're writing is fucking on point, but this sentence here, this one sentence, I don't know what you were thinking when you put, when you put that in there. And it's, um, but then here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, that's basically what happened. Oh, and then um, uh, th there was a time a few years ago where it came to me to write a book, but I, I wasn't clear enough for anything to really come through oh. for me to write it. So it was like I'd start and then stop. And it wasn't due to mm. lack of passion. It was just like I wasn't clear enough to be able to have something come through. And then when I did get clear enough, so to speak, around March, um, it came through. And then, of course, um, between July when it was published and now, um, it's not that I would ever delete what I wrote. It's just there's way more clarity. So I so I plan to go add that to um, the foundation, if you will. So, you know, what led me to being a parent empowerment coach was just the... Is that available on your shout is your guide dot something? <laughs> So the the book is available um, for the ebook and the paperback is the book. The book is available on Amazon. However, um, I don't know why she gives deadlines and says, <laughs> and says things are going to be done and ready at like <laughs> at like some specific time. But um, but yes, I am currently still. Um, so it is available on Amazon, but like I am still currently updating it and it's not going to take long. It's just not finished. Um, and so that, I, I mean, probably like a, a couple more weeks, maximum max, it'll be, it'll be done. Um, and then, and then, yeah, it'll be available for PDF and I'm going to spread it through the web for free. <clears throat> yeah. And there's Michelle, Michelle Bowen on Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah magic that I experienced when I decided to really look into what my daughter, you know, the, the, the relationship that I had with my daughter. And um, I've always loved children. And before I had a child, you know, even when I was 18, 19, 20, there was always something that was in me that was like, um, you know, and I smoked a shitload of weed back then. And I, I just remember just knowing that like when I had a daughter, I was going to operate differently. I didn't know exactly what it was lo would look like. I didn't dwell on it. I just kind of knew that having a child would, I'd operate differently. Um, I didn't know. I just really, 18, really 19, like. 20, a second, a second. Um, uh, yeah. I, I just really, really like how it's, it's the, the weed part was just completely unnecessary. Like, like the, <laughs> if you listen to what was said before and after the, the whole, I smoked a shit ton of weed, <laughs> it had nothing to do. <laughs> I, I love this. Uh, it's like it's like a, it's so it's so funny because we went we w watched this last last week and it was like that that was like noticed and then sort of uh, uh, you know like broken down by by current Michelle. She was like, "Nah, that's not. I don't know what's going on there." And now it's like a, a week later. It's like it's hitting even more. It's like even more obvious, like how it was just like this like thing that just like came in. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting how like. Uh, mm, I didn't. I didn't really expect this effect where it's like noticing sort of patterns even more uh, mm -hmm. uh, in in the in the in after already watching it once. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Well, it makes it means that the past the past week was worth a damn, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very different Michelle in front of us today. Today, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What that would end up looking like at all, but. But that's kind of what um, parenting has done for me, um, or so it seems. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. So it's like, uh, so um, when you're talking about your your daughter and sort of the initial period, it was a kind of a um, has it always been about 
sort of identifying triggers or has there been uh, other elements uh, of spirituality? I mean, I, I imagine like um, a lot of people become more connected with sort of oneness and this, um, yeah, this sort of inter interconnectedness uh, with with a child. Uh, and I guess when you're when you're looking for it, that must be especially more profound. So yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about like maybe some other dimensions that might exist uh, when it comes to having a child and be being in interested in sort of spirituality and stuff like that uh, that might oh. have uh, shown up. Yeah, uh, not at all only about the triggers. Um, just kind of like you thought you were committed before. <laughs> like it's now you see it's like um, for parents on this path, right? It's kind of like you thought you were committed before. Well, here's 24 seven for your ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh... <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like it just like, um, you know, when you have a child and you're on this, this particular path, you know, it's kind of like, Language you know, so you. Shitty, Sorry, pardon, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I said language is so shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really makes you notice it. It's like, a, a, it's like the more clarity you get about the idea, the harder it is to relate to, like, how you would try and express it before. Um, it's like when I listen, when I see myself trying to express like the same idea that I've got more clarity on, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that's so not like, what clear. am I saying? <laughs> yeah, it's not clear. It's not clear at all. It's, it's, it's very like of the moment. It's like, mm, this made sense last week. It doesn't make sense now. Like, not, I'm not saying that, that about this and just like, but that's been my experience with like everything really. Yeah. So, um, what's coming through that I'd like to convey as far as what was just stated is that, so it's like, Obviously, if you are um, transcending limiting beliefs and focused on, you know, your, your meditations, your yoga, et cetera, et cetera, obviously you're, we're, you know, when I thought I was committed, I thought I was committed. And there was no me never thinking that I was not committed because I thought I was committed. So it's like what I what was conveyed here was that when you have a child it's like you know you thought you were committed well now you know you're gonna have to really be committed but it's kind of like when you have a child <clears throat> it's just that it kicks up your awareness a bit more of the the anger frustration or just the energetic blockages that are there that you may not have seen prior to having another being in your presence 24 seven that you are having to be responsible for um, as well, right? So it's not that you weren't committed before you had a child. Um, and it's not even that you necessarily are more committed after having a child. It's just that you're gonna have more opportunities to, I had more opportunities to be aware of what was happening within me and what what limited beliefs I was still giving um, energy to. Um, yeah, it'd be cool to listen to that in seven days to see if that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. That was great. Yeah. Uh... It can seem like there are choices, but it's really just really one pointed. It seems like it's just deep in devotion. Like that's the only other option you have is just deep in devotion because your child um, is not going to like stop being, you know? Okay, okay, and, okay. And, okay, they're, okay. and, and they're being. Um, they're Are we agreeing with Pastor Michelle now? Uh, about the devotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because like, <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> man. <laughs> uh, so it's like the more that you see the what you don't want, the more that the more that you see the the way you're behaving and the way you're reacting to child that you don't what you don't want to do what you don't like repeating what patterns you don't like repeating the more simultaneously you're seeing at the same time what it is that you do want how it is that you would rather respond so it's like you do have the opportunities to, to deepen your devotion to what it is that you want you have more of those opportunities to deepen that devotion 
you know, when you, when you have a child or when you have anybody in your presence, but when you have a child, you have way more opportunities to deepen that devotion because you can continue to just keep the patterns going and going and going. And then, you know, or you can like, be like, you know, <laughs> but then it's so funny. Cause it's like, it doesn't happen until it's, <laughs> until it's supposed to happen. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just listen. <laughs> I'm just gonna listen. Dude. No, no, I, I, I really did like that. That though, it's like, um, mm, yeah, it's like deep and deep and devotion, and like all of these kind of teachings, which are very general. You know, uh, you know, it's 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 really it's about these. Each time, each time something's coming up, like choosing one way, and it's like for me, I guess uh, that would be like each time. Like a, a decision comes up, it's like choose the one that my heart wants. That's really all we got, dude. That's really all we got. It's just follow. Is that you? You 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 have more opportunities. What I started to experience was that I had more opportunities with my child and with having that container twenty four seven. I had more opportunities to follow my heart and to do what resonated more with my with my heart and what would bring me more peace and more relaxation. I had way more opportunities to operate in that way with my child because I had so many triggers that were occurring with my child. So each trigger is simultaneously an opportunity to, um, yeah, to quantum leap into what it is that you prefer to be, what you prefer to be doing, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. And then of course there's this thing where it's like, it doesn't happen until it happens. And yeah, that's true. But then there's also, if you're being triggered, whoever you are, if you are being triggered, then what's happening is always that you get to continue having the opportunity to follow your heart yeah and, and it's uh uh oh no i've i had a good thing habits i'm gonna play the video if i remember this you're unconditioned if, if, if they if you if they're between the ages of just coming out of your womb and like five six seven they're not conditioned so it's like they're not gonna do the things that like a lot of your peers might do who have been conditioned to a point to not do that thing that triggers you, you know what I'm saying? Or to not be authentic um, for fear of agitating who you think you are. Your child isn't playing those fucking games. So it's like, um, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, to us, it's beautiful, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I really like it's like it's like the 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 child is like a mirror. Yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, and that's funny because something came up earlier today about mirrors. It's funny that you said that. It's like that's 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 beautifully put. The child is like a mirror, like a, a fucking a. Because what's so dope about mirrors, right? It's that right now I can get off the phone and go in the bathroom and I can look at a mirror, right? The mirror isn't going to say this. It's not going to say that. The mirror is just going to be a fucking mirror. And what you see is what you get. You know what I'm saying? And um, so that's beautiful, beautifully put as far as our children are concerned. <clears throat> not programmed at all to alter their behavior so that you're not triggered or so that you don't see what is what wants to come up and be released <clears throat> or be brought to your awareness totally yeah and it, it's interesting uh, when you're talking about like um triggers or like things coming up it's like the only really like key component there is awareness it's like oh yeah if, as soon as you if you're aware of a pattern you have the opportunity to follow your heart on it uh, and it's like uh, it just by being aware of all these things happening over and over, it's just like it just recalibrates uh, into something better. It's like cultivating awareness is like I guess that's why mindfulness is so popular. It's the it, it, right. It's just the will. It's it's so fucking insane how simple it is. Right w with what you just said, it's just the will. It's just the willingness to look. Because if you fuck around and look and you fuck around and see, then it's like. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't feel that explosion in that moment, you, you can't not see what the fuck you just saw. So it's like your willingness to look is is the most 
fire thing out there, more fire than anything any coach or anyone else can ever say to you. It's really just your willingness to look is really what what does so much, if not all of it, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, yeah. And, and more and more I've been noticing it's like the things that are unseen like outnumber the things that are seen by like 99.9999999% to like, yeah, 0.0001%. So it's like, uh, you know, you have an infinite uh, depth of, of things to plumb for, like, seeing things <laughs> that are unseen and, and like, uh, working on them, but, like, being more aware of them. Uh, which is why, which is why when, like, okay, so then it goes back to the whole enlightened statement. So, like, we've all, we already know, like, why we, why the term is used, right? But it's like, it's like. There's no, there, it's just, what you just said is so legit. It's like, there's so much shit that's not seen, you know? It's, there's so, there's so much. It's like, um, there's just so much continuously in each moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd be very surprised if there was someone who mm, didn't, didn't have that, but maybe, maybe that exists. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Who who didn't have anything else to see? Yeah, who was done done with the done with the seeing. They they no no insensitivity. But I guess they would just immediately explode or something. That's what came to me would be like <laughs> you're not you're not in human form. You're like, ah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like every every cell in your body is on a DMT trip or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's probably it's probably a good thing that there's these things are unseen. <laughs> like uh, we're we're you know. We want to keep our human incarnations at least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's how that's how that 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 resonates. That feels legit, but you know, I don't fucking know, right? Yeah. But um, but then it's also you know we fucked around and find the shit fun as well. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh. yeah. It, it, I feel like a lot of things are like the crack addicts um, telling the like normal people like tips and tricks for like <laughs> being a crack addict uh you know it's like i don't know it's just like a different you know <laughs> it's like all, all the people who are like leaders in things who are like really good at things and explain things it's like they're the obsessed like you know you wouldn't want them you wouldn't want them uh uh doing anything else apart from that thing because that's all they've ever done their whole lives uh yeah so i don't know it's it does feel a little bit like that. It's like, you know, someone working a nine to five who's, mm, you know, they, they, and they get like a couple hours to, and they're like, think about spirituality. And there's some like crackhead like me, like, Hey, nothing is, you know, just observe the observer. It's like, you know, it's, it's a next level thing. I don't know. But it's just, it's, it's, you're following your heart, right? It's like when you, when, when you're seeking, when you're seeking, they're follow, you're following your heart. You were reading book after book after book after book because you were resonating, right? It's just, it's just following your heart. This shit's just fun to talk, like, it's just fun yeah. to explore, fun to dive into, you know? It's, it's, it's fun. I mean, <laughs> and it's funny that it's fun considering but it's fun. Yeah, it is funny. It's like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, beauty is always accompanied by, you know, a lot of devastating effects. I feel like it's never like, you know, you don't get, you like, don't get beauty without some, <laughs> some tower. <laughs> look at me laughing my ass off at us talking about the devastating aspect of <laughs> Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. What, what even? What, yeah, it's like a, it's like a child. Child is like beautiful and beautiful, also extremely terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And and pain. Uh, yeah. Sure. Pain. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's super interesting. I feel like um. It's like uh. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting the way you put it. It's like, yeah, you know, you thought you thought that you were like a, a spiritual and you were like good at this stuff, and it's like here is like a live test, like every every second that you're with this yeah. thing. It's like a, yeah, uh, I, and I, I mean, yeah, you, you just have to like deepen. deepen yeah, that makes me laugh too. <laughs> this thing. That's that because I I I mean this is a, a <laughs> might be even be an absurd comparison. But like I, I played like um, uh, 
uh, competitive games for a while. Embarrassed by my comparison. It was like, I would have some, uh, I feel like I would have some understanding about, like, how things work. Uh, and then I go in and I get, get my ass whipped. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, this kind of uh, mindset doesn't work. And eventually, what I stabilized on is something which, like, works that you can do to... And before I reveal that, it's kind of like a, a, it's like a very scientific uh, approach. I have, like, this, this scientist in me, and it's like, does this actually work? Is this actually real? Mm -hmm. And it's like, checking if it actually works and if it's actually real, like, a, a child is, like, the... the 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 same thing it seems like it's like oh damn it really has to be real uh yeah well you know what's funny is <clears throat> like when you when you had when you had said embarrassing by comparison I, what what came to me was like that <clears throat> it's like we all have this one set of beings in our life that is 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 like next level it's like right there, parallel to the child that we all have because we are all children of them, right? So we all have parents. So I feel like I feel like it, 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 it's so similar what what you end up doing, utilizing. You can if you don't have children, it's kind of like utilizing your relationship. It's it's like there's just no fucking exceptions. It all it ends up boiling down to so like you start maybe like in this. Oh, you found this this spiritual community oh this is nice this feels great mm. and then like you move to this then you, oh this is a great oh then you go over here this is great and then you're like fuck i gotta work with my. and then you it all ends up boiling down to like the two sets of beings in your life who there are no fucking exceptions with either and for some reason we can hold for a very long time that they are the exceptions and they're not and it's the children and it's our parents and and uh yeah, dude. Our parents, bro. That right there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's, it's kind of like, I know for sure with my daughter, I know both of them I held that for a while was that was that they were the exceptions to, um, and what am I saying an exception to? Like, they're the exceptions to you following your heart, I guess is how we can put it. To you following your heart in each moment. Like, maybe there there are times when it's not appropriate and maybe it's not appropriate when you're having when it's matters of the parents and matters of your children but then it's like that's when it's most appropriate <laughs> yeah it's like um it's so strange how that that kind of um it's almost like there's a threshold where you go from like aware of it aware of it and aware that it like that there's something different you could do aware of it aware of it aware of it and then it hits a certain threshold where it's like, there's just so much uh, suffering overload or something where it's like, oh, I'm not not aware of it anymore. And you're back in like the, mm, you know, just sort of like spinning on some kind of energy that yeah, you just don't even realize that you've made this exception to and like become unaware of. Uh, yeah, and it's like, it's it, it's like some like, de it's like the density of it or something uh, like just switches into... You know, well, well, these this doesn't count. Yeah. Perform well in situations where you're being tested to see if you're actually performing well. This is my this is my like thing that that worked for me when I was like uh trying to be a, a hyper competitive video gamer and succeeding. Uh, it was like I was trying to find like a practice that like mm, made made me more effective. Uh, as like a way to like test like oh you know does any of this mindset stuff actually work uh and yeah i oh, no. is is questioning so you like hold you like hold questions in your head or like a questioning mindset uh and like eventually uh it, it, what happens is it like disrupts your it disrupts your conditioning so that you are able to operate more from from the unconditioned uh yeah and it's not yeah it's, it's actually it's it's like uh mm, it was like using a nuke to uh, you know, to to do like win a uh, foot race uh, with some friends was what it was like. Mm -hmm. What I was doing, it's like you can you can kind of like engineer your brain to be uh, always uh, inquiring, always questioning into everything that appears, um, and that kind of that puts you into a different relationship to the things that you're interacting with, where you're not coming from your habits, 
um, but it's very tough. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, if if anyone wants to try it, uh, uh, feel free. I think it's de it's definitely like a um, you can probably you can tell that it's working when you feel your that you're in pain twenty four seven. Uh, if you're not in pain, then it's probably not working. That's shitty that that's what you said. Like, so, like, I, right before you said that pain part, I was going to say uh, the, uh, some of the practices that I've created for parents to use in moments of resistance with their children is similar to that. And then you go, it's probably if you're not in pain. <laughs> it, it, that's real, though. It's like, it's so, it, it's like you, you have to have that, like, it has to feel, like, in your head, like you're, like, uh, like you've jammed a wire in there that's, like... Pulse like electric in because uh, you you can just like question like things without questioning it and like quite you you can be questioning without even like making the words or making the questions but like to know if you're actually questioning it's like there should be some felt sense of like oh something's getting like fucked around with but in a good way yeah I'm happy to hear that your the parents are also <laughs> uh, also so like. So like you don't you don't have a child at the moment, but you'll still understand based on what you said what the following practice could potentially do if used, right? So like one of them is really fucking simple, and I used it when my daughter was two, and it's um two and three, and it's the hug it out method, right? And so it's like when you get triggered, instead of doing whatever it is you currently do, you have to go hug her. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that fucking simple? It's like the most simple shit you've ever but here's the thing because it's a practice and based on what we were just talking about moments ago because it's a practice part of the practice is that you're you're dedicating yourself to doing it each time that you're triggered right <laughs> and like it's it's wild because it's so simple right but it's fire it's if you apply it right and you have to want to apply it right so um for you to get the the benefit of it but it's kind of like it just breaks whatever stream was connected and it's not even like it's just breaking your own patterns it's like it's shattering the patterns that led to your patterns <laughs> you know? absolutely not... yeah it's so real that like when we when we work through our our trauma you know we're working through our parents trauma and their grandparents trauma and we're working through the whole collective like suffering every single time that we're you know breaking a pattern and uh becoming more aware and you know, finding finding alternatives. Uh, it's it's so real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Because like, if you look at it from uh, if you if you if you look out outside the perspective of time, uh, maybe that's <laughs> if if you let's say time is like all happening at once. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you break one pattern, then that's that's broken forever now for the rest of time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah. And uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that just that just immediately like took me to all of our children. <laughs> you know, and I say all of our because like I said, you physically don't have any right now, but it's like we yeah, know it's that real. That, yeah, it's we real. know we know that that doesn't matter, right? Every it's like yeah. your patterns that you've broken have helped, you know, all of our children. It's just it's it's dope. <clears throat> yeah, and I I feel like um mm, my opinion my feeling it's like i feel like the it's like every every moment in time is active at once mm -hmm. and like changing a pattern now also like helps all of our past selves uh simultaneously and that's like there's like a huge relief it like shifts the timeline into like a whole better time like like the whole the whole of time past and future changes but <laughs> yeah <sighs> I was like um that that's it's somewhat similar where you're getting you're getting you like you're forced to develop habits where uh you're because you're being put in a situation where it's actually being put to the test and then you have to like pass the test yeah so mm. <laughs> interesting <laughs> uh. all you can do is, la is laugh at this point you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> What else? What else is there to do? You can't uh, just laugh. Okay, because we have a we have a reaction time, so we can just. Oh yeah! Oh, we were silent time. there. So we can say <laughs> stuff. I'm gonna yeah. this. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, gratitude is related to this. Like, um, 
And recently you, you've been on... What was that, what was that Michelle? I said it was... And now I'm laughing because I know you're about to say recently you've been on a bit of a gratitude kick. Like, ah. I was going to say, it's funny, it's funny laughing about that silent time a second time because we've already reacted to this. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, 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 it's funny how it never really works. Uh, I, I think I have, I've said that a bunch of times in a bunch of different ones, but you always end up just like talking when when you started talking because it's like you're you're like respecting the silence, and you're like, and then as soon as you stop respecting the silence, you're like, okay, I can talk now. And then the past you is also <laughs> like, oh, it's my turn to talk now. So yeah, mm -hmm. a bit of a, a, a gratitude kick, I guess. Uh, how does how does gratitude play into like your whole thing? I love me. I love me. Oh, I love yeah. me. I love me. Forget 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 Michelle for a second. <laughs> how does gratitude play into your whole thing is one of the sickest questions ever. Like that is a it's a tough question. It's a tough question, but it's a good one. It's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> how, how does gratitude play into your whole thing? <laughs> This is a good question. I mean, I'm glad. I, I, more specific, it would have it would have been difficult to answer. I feel like. Oh, well, yeah. now we get to listen. Now we get to listen to to me <laughs> try to explain how gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. It's a tough one to see how past Michelle manages it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, far complex than I would right now. <sighs> it's like. There was a time, um, like uh, 2000, and mm, I started that job 2013. Uh, so, like around 2013, I remember vividly um, driving to the office of the job that I worked for um, for quite some time, and I remember, uh, I remember, I can even see right now everything. I remember driving up to the office, and I remember saying, you know. Um, praying, you know, that I, I wanted to feel fucking gratitude. Like I wanted to feel genuine fucking gratitude. Like I wanted that so bad and to feel genuine joy. Like I really wanted that shit. Um, and it's like, being on, being on this path, this path and having a child it's like, it, it just cracks your fucking heart open. It cracks it open. Um, and you have so many opportunities for it to be cracked the fuck open. So many opportunities with your child. I mean, and of course, clearly this goes for just in general, even if you have a child or not, right? It's just every time you fucking meet a human, you have so many or are triggered by any fucking thing. You just have so many opportunities for your heart to crack the fuck open, right? So it's like... <clears throat> But in, in parenthood on this path, you just have so many fucking opportunities. And the more that you, your heart cracks open and the more that you um, continue, continue to choose to um, utilize those opportunities with your child um, to crack your heart open even more, even more, even more, it's like gratitude is just a byproduct of that. And it's like for the littlest of shit, the littlest fucking things. Uh, so just to, just to like um, because it's kind of like implicit, but I'd like to make it explicit. It's like you you like basically like ask the universe to manifest gratitude, and then had a child a afterwards. It's like you, and then got really grateful from from that experience. So it's like you, uh, yeah, you did something, <laughs> and then it happened. You asked for something, and then it happened, uh, which is a common theme when people look back at their lives. I've noticed. Yeah, and, and 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 it goes back to what what we may have said in the first reaction video. It's like you know you're gonna get what the fuck you want, but yeah. but but dude, like <laughs> you're gonna get it. You just don't know how it's gonna come, but you're gonna get it. You know, like um, I think it was in the reaction video of the last one where you mentioned like you, you keep on asking for that car that you don't have right now you're gonna get it but you don't know if it means that you're gonna get into a car accident with this car for, to get it like you don't know yeah so and it and i really love the way that you put that because it's kind of like when you have somebody in your life who will put some shit that way it's like it'll have your ass like well maybe do i really want
or am I straight with what I have right now and whatever comes is I'm gonna is I'm gonna work with whatever 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 comes right so but yeah um a major part of the first of like 2012 and 2013 was like uh diving into like positive thinking negative thinking and like um the law of attraction the secret and really wanting a lot of external shit um that's kind of what jumped me off into the path was just like oh manifest oh yeah C totally unaware that that's what's happening in each second already so it was like years of i'm gonna manifest this i'm gonna manifest that i want to manifest this. and like that's what was always already happening so but yeah for sure um the relationship with my daughter definitely catapulted me into um feeling grateful for for being you know and and that's not even what i was really shooting for when i in 2012 and 2013 you know i wasn't really i wanted to feel grateful i wanted to feel joy but i was never running around talking about i want to just be or i just want to be grateful for just being or it really it really wasn't on <laughs> it really wasn't on what it what it what it became <laughs> back then it was it was a lot more superficial for sure yeah and i think that's the thing with with manifesting is like um hmm, i've been seeing on twitter it's like you will receive 500 dollars uh if you reply to this uh, no strings attached it's like manifestation uh uh for it to work it has to work and for it to work <laughs> it has to have like the events happen such that it happens like it can't just come come from nothing so like if you're if you're manifesting like enlightenment then you're gonna get all of your patterns obliterated um if you're manifesting like money maybe maybe and and you're and you're doing it in a way which is uh not from the heart you're doing it which is like very like i just want this at any cost like it doesn't matter uh and then you manifest that it's like you might manifest getting an inheritance from someone dying uh, a little earlier than they should have it's like you have to be a little bit you know especially when you're doing it um you know every, like you said everything's manifesting it's like every every movement of everything is is manifesting on on some mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. but when you're when you start doing uh uh magic as well um it's like you you've got to be careful but there it's like when, when you're uh, beseeching entities to like give you things it's like hey uh they could actually give you that and there are going to be you know that's going to have to actually happen it's not that there's going to be consequences it's like it's going to have to actually happen and uh, uh it's sort of like truly manifesting something is accepting everything all of it yeah so it's like oh you you don't want to you want to learn the piano well, you don't actually want to learn the piano because you don't want all of it. And if you wanted all of it, then you would already be doing it. Mm, 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 mm. And so it goes down to just like, yeah, you know, just, just work with what you want to do in the moment because that's what you can be more certain of than anything else. You know, like right now, do you do you want to be on this call with Handro? Yes, I do. I, I do. Then just be on the call with Handro because when you kind of like go beyond there, it's like, are you looking at everything else that you're trying to ask for? Like, are you really looking at all that comes with it? So it's like, it is a whole lot less heavy to just focus on like, what do you really want in each moment? And then just kind of like dealing with what's telling you that what you want in that moment is not able to happen. And then working with that bit by bit, um, instead of like focusing elsewhere. Close, close call there. Close call. Uh, uh, glad it was a yes. Uh, uh, um, but yeah, like the, um, like, do you want to know what you want? Is like a really important question. I feel like that needs to be asked. It's like, do you actually want to know what you want? Because it like knowing what you want is kind of like realizing that you're choosing like a shitload of suffering. Because that's what you want. Mm. Mm -mm. And it's like, do. You, do you actually want this alternative thing, or are are you actually okay with like the suffering and then that that you're choosing right now? And like, 
the answer, of course, is that you're okay with the suffering you're choosing right now. So, like, just, like, being aware that that's what you're choosing ends up changing it. So, like, knowing what you want <clears throat> ends up shifting, ends up manifesting a bunch of different things. Yeah. And it can get kind of beautiful. It can get kind of, cause it can get really beautiful to really look at why do we want the suffering, right? Because, I mean, like, I don't know if we have a lot of conversations about the benefits of suffering. There are a shitload of benefits to suffering that if we maybe looked at, we might be able to get a little bit more honest about the fact that we're choosing it. Like, I mean, there are so many choices. Like, how many, there's so many benefits to feeling like a victim. So many. I mean, we condition children to do it all the time. You'll get more attention. You'll get early in the game. We'll, we condition kids and, 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 and others to that. One of the key benefits of being a victim is that you're going to get a little bit more love, the love that has been portrayed on TVs and in society for so long. And so why the fuck would we not continue that into our old age? There are so many benefits to suffering and to feeling like a victim. And when we really start to look at how we may really be benefiting from that, we might start to see, oh, look at my little sly ass. <laughs> I, I, I'm talking about I want to I want to get that house. But then me not having the house means I have like less responsibility because the apartment maintenance people can keep coming that and you know or and i don't have to call and pay for these extra repairs like when we start to really just own up to the fact that there are a lot of benefits to being a victim and to suffering then we might be able to really see why we continue to play that game and just seeing that like you said is enough to make us not do it anymore yeah it's like it's that thing we talked about before it's like all you, all you need is awareness and it's like Bring your awareness to what you're choosing. It's a tough. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think it's cool to have fun with this shit because it's like if if you can have fun with looking at this type of stuff because because there was a long time where I wasn't having fun looking at it. Well, so I so like I was having fun, but but I was having fun suffering. Like, like I was having fun suffering while looking at all of this right yeah so but it's like if, if you can kind of like have some fun with um looking at why you do what you do um or why you might be like why what's in front of you is not the problem having some fun looking at why your child is not the problem or having some fun looking at why your parent is not the problem or why your partner is not the problem then you can have some fun transcending whatever you perceive to be the problem but I do think a key component is fun, uh, for sure. Because yeah. it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy to. It's easy to, um, to leave that part out. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's so inherent to every 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 moment. Is like there is, there's always that like little element of uh. uh it's like oh, this is actually kind of like I'm getting something out of this. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's tough to articulate the whole fun thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um... oh no, what happened? What were we talking about? So we'll see in one sec. Wait, gratitude. I feel it's oh. not that I didn't have anything to be grateful for yeah. for all those years, and especially up until that moment where I was praying for gratitude. Um. And even before having a child, right? It's just that um, after having her, when she turned around two or so, and I started to recognize certain, uh, certain just 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 su suppressed emotions or whatever, <clears throat> energetic blockages still within me. Um, it's just that. Oh 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 yeah. Oh, that's nice. So it's like it's it's interesting, right? We will call we we've called things so many different names, like suppressed emotions, energetic blockages, and shit. But like, and and of course, what I'm about to say is also a, a series of names. But it's like, it, it, what I was starting to notice was that I was still doing shit that I didn't want to do, like, um, plain and simple. I, I I what my daughter was showing me was that I was I was doing a lot of shit that I did not want to do, like, um that's what a lot of triggers are it's showing you where you're still doing shit that you don't want to do um and, and it, it, it 
truly like that's what I that's what she was really showing me and I didn't I wasn't seeing that and so the longer that I wasn't seeing that the longer I continued doing the shit that I didn't want to do <laughs> um but for me that's what what a lot of triggers are are opportunities for us to catapult ourselves to doing what we want um and like it sounds vague I guess it can sound pretty vague but I guess the fun doesn't start to really the fun doesn't really start to kick in until it's seen that it's not vague but like for real for real like in each in each moment like um literally like what are you you're triggered what literally michelle are you doing right now that you oh you're focusing your attention on the sound that your daughter is making when you'd rather be focusing your attention on this oh okay shift like it's it's literally she was showing me that i was doing a lot of stuff that i didn't want to do that's beautiful, yeah, and and it's like um, mm. noticing that you don't want to do it in the moment is noticing that like you never wanted to do it and you don't want it to ever happen again. <laughs> yeah, ever, ever, and then and then it goes to what you said earlier, which is like when you notice it and when you shift, it's funny. It, you do it everywhere because it's like then yeah. you then you feel you feel back into your childhood and you feel back into oh that projection that was coming to me from my parent was because they were focusing on some shit in the moment that they didn't want to be focused on either right so it's not like blame the past generation it's just you're here now break that shit for the past and the future and keep it moving yeah it's beautiful yeah and i really, I really like when you put it into like a, that specific example mm -hmm. i just have a thing for specific examples <laughs> yeah I guess they are beneficial, right? <laughs> I, it, it's really hard. They're really hard to do. Uh, but when you get a good one, thing is you can get a bad one. And then it's like, no, that doesn't quite capture it. Mm, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a, that, that, that was a good one, I guess. Uh, yeah. Gratitude. I was able to actually um, willingly crack my heart open, you know? I wanted to willingly crack my heart open using the triggers that came with our relationship. Um, and yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. for gratitude. Uh, just... Yeah. So she said, I was wanted to willingly crack my heart open. The funny thing though is a lot of the time, for a quite some time between 2012 um, and, and now, you just, you're thinking that your heart's already fucking open. So uh, it's like- true. yeah. So it's like, although what I just said there was that I willingly wanted to, I, I feel like what happened more than anything was I became to just, you know, you just admit defeat, dude. I just admitted, I was, I was, like, I was like, I was like, fuck. I like, instead of trying to like beat myself up about the triggers or uh, instead of feeling less than my peers for being triggered by my daughter, I just was like, fuck. Okay. Um, and then the heart started to crack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like noticing, or yeah, like, yeah, just noticing or being aware of, hmm, like the reality, the reality of what's going on uh, makes your heart like able to access it it's like able to like uh pick up that suffering and then love it and it can't do that if it, it isn't aware that the suffering's there and it can be really easy where like in the early stages of spiritual path even later um to like uh be like no that's 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 not there that was just like you know that's not there because uh spiritual it's like had had an awakening experience so like that's not there and then like all you're doing is denying the opportunity for your heart to uh become aware of that suffering and and convert it into compassion yeah i love what you said about how even you said in the beginning of spiritual path and then even later right because like later i mean and like emphasis on later like it, it can happen like because it can be subtle so you know it's easy to underestimate how fucking subtle the suffering is like suffering is suffering and so you it, it's really easy to um 
Yeah. So like admitting defeat, that's what a child will fuck around and have your ass do. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you win, you win, okay, okay, okay. Like <laughs> for sure. Is that sounds a lot like uh like this idea of transmutation. It's like there's you know, there's some kind of um what people might consider like negative energy and then it's being transmuted into this like gratitude or like opening opening of the heart type energy. Would would you um do you resonate with that? Yeah. Just a byproduct. A byproduct of just a natural effect of just the heart opening. Uh, I find I find myself agreeing with Michelle. Michelle's framing here more than more than my framing. Um, it's like it's like if your heart if your heart becomes aware of suffering, then there's this byproduct of like gratitude and compassion. Um, but it's not like transmutation is like an interesting frame because it's like mm, it happens as soon as you're aware of it. So it's not like you're doing anything to transmute it. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you paused it and said that right when you did, because what I was feeling was like it's just it's 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 one and the same. It's just it's one and the same. It's like <laughs> it's one and the same. Whew. Awesome. It's like what else is, you know. It's like, why wasn't I fucking grateful? Why was I praying for gratitude? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, when I, when I think back on that time, I had my own space. I had a, I had a, a job that was, I was receiving income. Girl, because your I ass was children. suffering. I was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty real. Listen, listen to that shit. <laughs> oh, why was I <laughs> Your ass was fucking suffering. Uh, so real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so real. <laughs> oh, but I do like what was stated, which was, you know, because what, what did I just say? I said, I said, why was I praying for stuff? Why was I praying for gratitude? Um, Because I had my own place. I had, I had this job, et cetera. And so what I really like about that is how it's, it's easy to, it's easy to have, I guess it goes down to the most simplest and most, one of the most commonly used phrases is that um, money doesn't buy you happiness. Like, like nothing external, like nothing, 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 nothing external is going to make you um, just feel overwhelmed with, with, with your essence, with you, with the love and the love that you are with gratitude, nothing outside of you is going to be able to be that unconditional well of, of joy and peace like nothing outside of you not your <clears throat> well i guess i wanted to say you're not your partner but then if your partner is aware of <laughs> like you know then maybe maybe there's i don't know but like really nothing outside of you can give you that right um nothing nothing i i really i this is this is something that I've noticed more and more. It's like, um, happiness just comes from being like aware, aware of suffering. Mm. Mm. And it's like everything, everything in modern society or culture, which we see as like good or like making us happy is a method to disassociate from suffering. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's just, well, it's just, it's just like a separation from, it's like, it helps you. It like stimulates your senses so that you're not aware of the suffering anymore. You're just aware of whatever is the stimulation is. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's like, man, it's actually just like it's not even like, hey, stop playing video games because they're like bad for you. It's like, hey, being aware of your suffering is actually more fun. Like for it is real, way more fun. it's, it is it's way, better. It is way more fun. It it's is, just better. It is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's just better. It is. And um, <clears throat> it's like watching TV isn't even really that dope until you're at least, you, till, till you're having fun with with recognizing your suffering. <laughs> then you yeah. might really enjoy, then you might really enjoy that show, <laughs> you know? But, um, but then because when you watch, when you watch a few episodes and this isn't something, and, and looking at why you're suffering isn't really your thing, you'll fuck around and watch a few episodes and then, 
doorbell ring, somebody comes and like everything that you could have been looking into just like spills out because they get, they got the DoorDash got your order wrong or something because of the pizza van, the pizza place left a few pepperonis off your pizza. Everything comes spilling over. Um, yeah. So it's like, yeah. And I guess this is also one of the reasons why, you know, a lot of us feel like we need to be fixed or saved or, or, or whatnot is because it doesn't really seem like just looking is the thing. Like it doesn't really seem like it can't be that just looking would be the thing or I would have already seen it. So then it, we just kind of go straight into something's wrong with me. I need to be fixed um, because it has to be that because it can't be that just being willing to look would be the thing that really does does something you know cool right um but it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah just being aware of suffering like that's that's it yeah to let go and do whatever I wanted to do it's like why wasn't I feeling gratitude and it's like um I wasn't fucking here you know what I'm saying oh, you I wasn't said it so well here. I wasn't fucking oh man I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't here you know <clears throat> I love that I love that like mm, it's like why why am I not aware I'm not here it's like you're it's, it's like it's like um you're saying you're saying the, the same thing as not being aware you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it really is like that simple. It's like, are either aware or you're not aware. Oh, you're not here. If you're not aware, you're not here. Like that's, yeah, that's, and, yeah. And I'll go, I'll even go into like a, a real life example of me not being here. Like I said, I wasn't really here, right? Well, Michelle, what does that look like? You not, like I wasn't here, dude. I was waking up, smoking weed. Then I, this was, this was 2020, um, 20, 2013, right? I'm waking up, I'm smoking weed. I'm going, um, and, and back then smoking weed wasn't putting me into a deep, um, blissful, spiritual, it was just like a habit. I'm smoking weed, I'm eating more than I probably should have because I was just in consume mode. Like, and so then I'm, then I'm driving to work, I'm working maybe like 10, 11 hours a day at a job that I didn't want, that I didn't enjoy being at. Um, and, 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 and. And then also while I'm working, I'm also starting to read like Napoleon Hill and a few other books, right? So I'm just totally in consumptive mode. Then I'm leaving work and then it's like, okay, I go smoke again, drink, um, have conversation with people that's like just pain body, talking to pain body, covering up, covering it up with alcohol and, and weed. And then it's like, um, okay, everybody goes home and then it's like you're at home and you smoke some more or you watch watch tv or you um you know you know what i'm saying like it's it's just like this is what i, I was not here there was and then like i remember around 2013 that's when i was starting to introduce i was starting to um, manifest different things that were introducing meditation to me but I, I i remember i remember to this day sitting down and like trying to meditate you know for the first time and like not making it past like not even getting to 60 seconds you know <laughs> like just i wasn't here like i wasn't here i wasn't here and um but but i didn't want to feel gratitude and joy <laughs> you know but i wasn't here yeah and i feel like meditation is really hard uh uh it's like it's easier when you're more aware because if you're like not aware at all and then you're like okay let's try awareness it's like bruh, like you know so much pain and suffering that you were previously ignoring comes up it's like hello please pay attention to me for one second and you're like no hey. yeah i just i just started loving the hell out of meditation you'll see my ass randomly do that shit just randomly throughout the day like i just started loving that i love it to death but that's not I guess it's because like a, a lot of us go into meditation thinking it's the fix and that can really fuck us up. Right. When we think that this is something that's here to fix us or make us better, or that you get your spiritual badge. If you meditate two hours a day like that, that I mean, like kill me now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, meditation really wasn't even a huge, of course it's, it's a beautiful tool 
and it's appropriate when you feel eager to do it when you feel the desire to do it then it's very appropriate but until until then um it, it can really be if you don't want to do it i just don't i don't really recommend meditating unless you feel like they'll, they'll, there were those times throughout the years where i was like okay i'm gonna meditate every day for the next seven days at 5 a.m and then i would do it but that's only because i felt the inspiration to and i followed that right but um otherwise i just wouldn't i wouldn't ever um I would never associate meditation with being like the fix or the only way to um, to be more aware of your suffering. Yeah, I, I only said it like uh, being able to do meditation or even liking it after enlightenment. So, mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, for me, it's like um, you know, in, insight's the thing that you want if you're uh, mm, if you want to understand what reality is or get enlightened or whatever. Mm. and it's like however you're getting that insight is the way to do it and everyone has their own path and like optimal way to do it and you're kind of, they're probably already doing it uh on some level and like just leaning into your own thing is is really fucking important yeah because right does more than any more than any like i can it can aid with like concentration and 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 and, and focus but like more than anything like whatever you're doing in this moment that you don't want to be doing is going to give you is gonna like that's that's gonna help you quantum leap like just fucking timeline jump if you just take like two or three things you're doing right now that you don't want even one right <laughs> one thing that you're doing right now that you don't want to do ever again and you just you just keep looking into it until the moment where you don't do it anymore there's gonna be such a fucking shift that it's gonna be like you know, it's going to do so much more for you than forcing yourself to meditate when you don't feel the inspiration or the desire to meditate. Yeah, like a yeah, sincere, sincere inquiry and 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 getting awareness. It's like, yeah, that's that's always going to be better than anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so trippy because then at the same time, it's like, but if your favorite teacher and somebody you really enjoy listening to is telling you to meditate and you're inspired by them and you really enjoy them and then you then you meditate but then at the, but it's like just you're you want to just make just make it's like if, if you want to do it do it even if the reason you want to meditate is because your favorite teacher or mentor is telling you to is that it the meditation will be fruitful because you want to right yeah and like everything everything on some level is sort of just engineering ourselves to be more open to receiving the things that we want and if meditation is like uh a hmm you know it's a a sort of thing that convinces you that you deserve to get more insight uh, uh or to be open to insight then that's that's great um yeah and i, I think on, on some level you know hmm as uh, as as humans we just kind of uh we really enjoy sort of like the the treadmill the the progress will and it's like a lot of people i feel like they could accelerate being open to way more stuff and aware of way more stuff uh, uh but they just kind of they want they want the the slow mm, you know they want they want the feeling of like okay i've done this now i get this yeah that's part of our conditioning, right? Because a lot of us were raised where, like, you start as the entry level employee, and then you know, you know, you get the 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 point three percent raise in a year, and then you keep going, and then it's kind of like, or like elementary school, middle school, high school, college, you know. So, this is part of the conditioning <clears throat> for sure. Yeah, and maybe 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 it like makes the ride smoother. Maybe it means better integration. Maybe it's like a uh, good for you, but it. Uh, it's. I think it's important to know that it is optional to sort of have that sort of uh, working on something then getting results. It's like you can just get results sometimes uh, if you're open to it. Mm. You don't have to be always in this like, I'll do this and then I get this kind of like uh, mindset it, that you can be detached from that and it can go a bit faster. Yeah. Right. Because, because if you're on that, if you're on that do this and then this and then this and then this then it's kind of like when you're here and you get triggered by your partner or your child it's like oh but it's not tuesday so then i can't possibly <laughs> you know what i'm saying 
Yeah, but at, yeah. that, at that moment, you had that opportunity to like really like just shift. And when you shift, like everything fucking shifts. But so um, <clears throat> it's all fucking trippy. This conversation's trippy. But it's all just trippy. It's all trippy. And that, that, that's really what it is, right? It's like you're, you're um, you know, the universe is never obeying your conceptual framework of how things like should work. So if you're if you're open to getting insight, then when the universe makes it available to you, then you receive it, and that could be yeah, like come through like a trigger coming out of nowhere. Yeah, but if you're in that mindset, you're like, oh no, mm, I do spiritual stuff when I meditate. That's when I get my insight. Then you're gonna just not be open to receiving insight. Yeah, from that pizza delivery guy who just said something uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, and that's like one of the most beautiful little things about the whole I don't know situation, right? It's like, like always being in that kind of like that, that I don't know, I'm not done. This is not it. There is no it. There is no end, right? Because that, like, I don't know shit. Like, I don't know shit at all. Like, look at all of the words we've regurgitated here. Like, but like, we don't know shit. <laughs> it's like, so I guess just staying there allows you to just be ready for whatever is coming that you want more than feeling like, oh, no, it can't come till next Tuesday because, <laughs> you know, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get my insight once a week. Uh, it's like, <laughs> ah, hmm, okay. Yeah. I wasn't here at all, you know? You weren't here. Just, That's what we're talking about. wasn't. And so the, the gratitude and the awe. It just was like, it was all, it's always there. It's always fucking available to all of us, right? But it's just like, you got to be here where it's at. Beautiful. I, I feel like in my life, uh, it's like whenever I've um, sort of made that, like a, a, the, the sort of vow or, or like asked for something, it's like wanted something, then asked for it, I've received it. Um, uh -huh. And I, I feel like this uh -huh. is... Uh, uh -huh. Uh, it's something that you notice when you start doing it. You're like, wait, like I asked for that thing like two years ago, and I have it now. Uh, and it's like it's not a it's not a coincidence, and it's almost like this uh, every, everyday magic, I guess you could you could say, where it's just like if you if you want something and sort of ask the universe for it, then it almost uh, immediately manifests if if you're open to doing that. I feel like. I think it's a, I think there's a, a really, really amazing and beautiful thing that happens when instead of saying, what do I want? It's more like just saying what is being wanted through me. I feel like that, that, ugh. but I know there was a time, of course, when I wasn't saying that or seeing it that way, but, but for sure, it's just so fucking beautiful when you close your eyes and you see something and like, you're not trying to force an imagination. I remember there was a period when I was trying to force like my, just in my imagination to, you know what I'm saying? But when you just see certain shit, when you close your eyes and have a little daydream or when you just have an inspiration or you see something and it's like, wow that what what it's it's instead of like this is what i want it's more like recognizing that that's what's being wanted through you like through you um when you give it away in that way it's kind of like that's kind of how you give it to yourself like when you you know <laughs> so it's yeah, pretty yeah. dope i i think that's a that's real it's, it's almost like there's um it's that interconnectedness thing it's like like what does the universe want? Like what's 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 happening in in the want like interconnected space right now? Uh, like oh shit! It's like that that kind of seems like it has a lot of like mm, gravity to it, like a lot of pull to it. Like that's so that's that's what that that is like what I want, and it's there's almost like a factual nature to it where there's not like a being which is like I want this. It's like oh, you know, there's a. Uh, high density thing that it's like going to happen in the world and i'm being pulled towards it and just kind of admitting that and yeah kind of surrendering to it yeah and that like plays into what came through this morning about like doubtlessness right it's kind of like um it, it, it plays it plays into that as well right like like the only reason that there would be any type of doubt about whether i should be on this podcast with you right now whether or not i should be here at 4 p.m eastern time with you instead of doing this that the other is because 
feel like they're just kind of giving away that that whole aspect of what I need to be doing or what I should be doing and instead embracing like what's being done what's being done through us what clear you know it, like there's no room for doubt when you kind of play around with play around and have some fun with maybe it's not about what you want maybe it's about what's being wanted through you it kind of gives you that permission to just be totally okay with what it is that you feel you want to do in the moment because it's like it's not you that wants it it's it's like where was that coming from did that originate from who you think you are or did that come is, is that what's coming through you you know yeah that's super real yeah fuck yes and that right it's like there's not just for big shit, right? It's the littlest, subtlest of things. Like if you ask for it, for sure. Uh, that, that, for sure. That's your, uh, like the, the, like asking even for the subtlest, the less things. I feel like conversation is kind of, it's almost like a manifestation engine. Like whenever you're saying to someone like, I want this or I like, uh, no. Yeah, like I, I want this and that's coming through in your words to someone else. It's like on some level you're manifesting it, yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, right? Because it's like whether or not that other being is what? Because you're not just leaving it with just you and your own magnificence. You're adding someone else's magnificence to the mixture, right? It's like all, all of, of course, of course. I, I definitely feel that when you bring someone else into anything that you're um, into anything it makes whatever it is that you're manif manifesting it just it amplifies it coming here for sure um for sure that was nice yeah I, I would kind of frame it as like it's like uh if you say something like the universe is listening <laughs> yeah oh yes 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 um, uh, one of my favorite mentors on in the world, uh, Neville Goddard. He uh, one of the ways that he put that he put. Oh, I think he was referring to imagination when he spoke about this. Um, but I I think he said something along the lines of he was speaking on prayer, and he was like, uh, he was saying if you saw it or that if you wanted something and you saw it and you desired it, then you don't, then there's really, you know, then, then that, then that's that, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's <laughs> then, then that's that, you, you know, to continue going back to, and, and asking over and over again, we only do that. Uh, we only do that when, when we, um, yeah, when we're not when we're when we're not seeing that what what we're seeing is coming through us. It's you know what I'm saying. Uh, what we're seeing might be coming from what it is that we would be praying to to begin with. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like no noticing that, like uh, we're we're all sort of um, manifestations of the, the like oneness rather than. Mm. You know, individual beings asking for things. Yeah. And that's right, right, right. Like if we're all, if we are all one, like if that's not just some bullshit and we are all one and I go to Hanjo and I say, I'm really thinking about writing this book and Hanjo like just automatically, you know, we've all, we've, whether or not he even opens his mouth to say something, just the fact that his ears heard that, like it already, it amplifies whatever it is that I, you know, Ooh, this is nice. That's nice. It does. It does something. It does something. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, real quick, Kanjo. Let me let me go to my daughter real briefly. Okay. Okay, everyone. Michelle is checking out her daughter because for some reason, whenever me and Michelle talk, last time we did this recording, it took an hour and fifty minutes, and I was like, you know, we kind of like worked out our ideas this time. You know, uh, maybe it'll be maybe it'll be shorter, but man. Uh, we just have a lot to say. <laughs> um, yeah, no, just it just kind of works, uh, and it's weird because the original, mm, the original podcast, you know, it's a little, it's a little stilted, it's a little like um, mm, uh, podcasty rather than sort of a genuine conversation. But in these reactions, I don't know, me and Michelle, it's just we just kind of pop off on like every every subject that that comes up. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it at least. I mean, I, I, 
I feel like I feel like uh uh we also we're kind of always just kind of saying and coming back to the same thing, but I guess that's how you know that it's a quality. Like that's an important thing to like try and get at. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Michelle's back. I remember there was a <clears throat> um there was a, a mentor of mine who had a quote that oh. that used to trigger the <laughs> fuck out of me back in the day, and <laughs> like. Um, now it makes total fucking sense, <laughs> like, but it was very triggering years ago. And it was, it was, um, and, and what was, it was <laughs> something, this might not be verbatim, but it's like, you always have what you want. Like you, you already have what you want. And like, clearly that can be very fucking triggering to somebody who's like, uh, no, the fuck I don't, I don't want to live here. I don't want to have this relationship. That's bullshit. I don't want, but like now it's like, oh, like, I, you know, makes, makes sense. <laughs> it's so, it's so real. Like the, mm, like everyone, everyone already being in their preferred situation. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like, um, they were, they, they're in their preferred, like, uh, like they're they're on Earth. Like they they I guess they they could just immediately go to another planet if they wanted. Um, didn't say that. Didn't say that. It's kind of like if you if you want something, then you also want all of the suffering and like and like dying, like losing parts of yourself and losing all the things you have. Uh, you that that's also part of wanting it. So it's like you can't want something without actually wanting it. If you if you if you wanted something and actually wanted it. Then you'd be okay with everything, or be open to sort of all these attachments falling away, which are the only thing which is stopping you from getting it. And uh, as soon as that happens, as soon as you're open to that happening, then the thing that you want happens because you've uh, stopped being attached to the things that were stopping you. Yeah. Yes. Fuck yes! It's like, are we willing? Are we are we willing for the destruction too, or are we just really gonna? continue to like just like suffer um looking for just the pleasure 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 of 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 everything you know or are we willing are we willing and even excited for the destruction that's inevitable and yeah, always like, no. anyways you know <laughs> um like that's kind of the point is we're veiled and so we're not we're not down for the destruction most most, most people aren't but it's kind of like it, it, when you don't when you when we are kind of like I want this I want this I want this, um, but it's not what we have. It, it's it's just really kind of like what we talked about earlier, where it's like really looking at what how we're benefiting right now from what we have that we're comfortable with. How are we benefiting? Really looking at it, like what are we getting out of it, and really admitting what we're getting out of it instead of saying "woe is me," like ad admitting. Ooh, that one. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so like rela uh, relationships that relationships, let's talk about like relationships as an example that are like detrimental, obviously detrimental to both parties, right? It's like, and this is not in any way to put down anybody that's ever been in type to in any type of relationship that is, um, that was violent or anything like that. It's just, it's just really, really seeing that just being willing to like take a like betting on what's not really comfortable being more beneficial, what's not known and what's not comfortable being more beneficial to whatever the fuck it is that you're that you're saying you don't want anymore, right? But actually backing that up with some action rather than just saying I don't want this anymore, right? Um, and, and being able to look at what is it that we're getting out of this bad situation or this horrible relationship that we're in? How am I benefiting it? And just having fun with it. Like, oh, they do pay all the bills. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but have fun with it. Not to like be mean to yourself or like disrespect any other person who's been in the situation, but to truly fuck around and see like, what am I getting out of this thing that I keep on saying I'm a victim of? Like, because that's the only thing that keeps me here. That's right. That's the only thing that's keeping me here. Like, um, and, and, it, and, 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 you know, I, 
how it's coming out may make it seem like it's easy easy <laughs> but but it's not so much about it being easy as it is just being willing to really look at it that's all and that is courageous you know it is courageous to to do that in a society that would rather just like you know this sucks i'm going to watch tv for <laughs> for an hour and then it won't suck so bad for an hour at least and then you know it is courageous as fuck to look at that it <clears throat> Um, but for sure. And then like, I, I know that we did this seven days ago. Right. And then like, not too long after it's, it's the same, it, what came through was like the same thing for when you say, um, what you don't like, or we, when the people in your life, when we complain about the people in our lives, right. Who, um, this person's this, my father's so annoying. My mom always says this about me, my sister, you know, and then also just like seeing that they're, they're, they're angels and they're probably telling you something indirectly that you really want to hear so that you can use it to, to your benefit to do what it is that you really want to do. Right. They're just fucking angels. Anybody in your life that is just annoying the fuck out of you. Right. They're, they're you dude. They're an angel not aware of themselves as being an angel and they're giving you more clarity on what you would rather do. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just about like looking at how, well, clearly I'm telling myself, giving myself all these opportunities to have more clarity about what I want. So what am I getting out of what I don't want that's keeping me here? Cause it's something, <laughs> it's fucking something. We, we don't do shit. We don't, we don't do shit unless we're, Maybe that's the animal in us, the primal stuff. Maybe that's the animal in us, but we don't do shit unless we're getting something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like awareness. Uh, like the reason that we don't like being aware, I feel at least part of it is like we know that awareness means change. Mm, so it's like that's what avoidance is. Like that's what that's what being unaware of something is, is like it coming up. You You notice very quickly that being fully aware of it would mean a change in the thing that you're getting and the way that things are. And you're like, okay, let's ignore that then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change. Right. And yeah, change in that comfort zone, whatever is comfortable, whatever is comfortable, whatever you got right now going to be tossed to the wind. You don't know. And not to say that what's coming after won't be amazing, but you don't know if it's going to, we don't know what it's going to be. So it's like, maybe it's just, Maybe we should just keep doing what we don't want to do so that we don't have to deal with whatever that could be that's coming, right? And um, yeah, I did that for a while. I'd like to add that as a disclaimer. Anything oh, yeah. that I'm anything that I'm saying here that I'm that that may be coming through as sounding super easy or whatever, don't be fucking fooled because I. I did it all. I stayed in the relationship way beyond its fucking expiration date. I I I kept doing um I guess we kind of keep doing what we don't want to do all the way until we stop. Like so I definitely did that for a um a very 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 long time and I'm constantly um being given opportunities to again, do something I don't want to do or choose what I want to do. Like, that's just what life is. It's like... I, I, and I think there's something too where it's like, um, being aware of something is initially painful or, like, bad. Um, but if, you, if, you're, if you're, like, aware of it for a longer amount of time, then you become also aware of the solution. So it's like being aware of a thing that you don't like or that you don't want or that like seems bad that so that you avoid it seems like it, it is it is bad but like the longer that you hold that awareness it event it eventually transforms into good just naturally yeah mm -hmm. you you got to leave something to get the to get the you got to leave this well for most monogamous relationships you got to leave this partner to get to have space for the next partner um <laughs> or you got to you know, just, just, you got to leave that house to go move to the next one. There's destruction happening in every fucking thing that we do. And it's like, you say you want this, or you're going to get it. It's already here. It's already yours. But do we, are we down for the destruction, right? Are we down for the destruction of, of 
or letting go, just letting go. Yeah, and it's like a, a it's, it's it's like asking. I feel like we're always we're always asking uh uh like the the genie like the universe genie for things, uh, and like the way that the universe genie delivers it is like through through the real world. So it's like I already if said you're, this. If you're so mm, you know, if you really really want money, uh, and then you're like you're like uh, down for it at any cost. And then you're you're asking the universe for it, then it will deliver it to you at any cost. You know, it's like a relative might die or something. Well, I gave it. I said exactly the same thing. If you, <laughs> so I guess I this is how we can. Wait, I said exactly the same thing. So I guess the things that are repeated. I feel like the things that are repeated um, in in this now second reaction. The things that are repeated before it comes up in the in the original are like the key points for those for whoever is gonna, is gonna like it had to come through again. i mean i really like it because for me what it feels like it's like um we're, we're trying to get at things uh, uh mm. and those things are really hard to get at so like hearing it repeated is actually really valuable mm -hmm. uh, at least even for me it's like i'm clarifying my idea about it by hearing myself say it again but What's surprising is I think I said that exact. It's like I even used the same like pauses and like then I, now I say this and now I say this is like oh man, I'm a lot more engineered than I thought. <laughs> but a lot more engineered than you thought, or is it, or is it that it's like it had to come through for it's not a it's for it's for whoever's gonna watch it. Yeah. Somebody's gonna hit you up and be like, dude, but this part <laughs> right here was the part. Was the part yeah. But you said the second time in the same way, like that really. <laughs> yeah, but for other, for other, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I laughed at the most fucked up part. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you're so right, and I was already smiling before you said that because one of your tweets that made me smile recently <clears throat> was everybody's gangster until <laughs> until they're in front of a real genie yeah. or or something. It's true. <laughs> it's like it's like do you really want this alternative timeline where you actually get that thing like that actually manifests do you actually want that do you actually want that to manifest you know and it's like the truth is the things that you <laughs> you don't like, are manifested <laughs> you like the the so. stuff that you don't like there's a reason you don't uh you are hey like isn't a, it funny you, hold on you know, it's yeah. Isn't it funny when, in hindsight, when you look back on a lot of the shit that you thought you wanted, and then like then you then you see like oh no that that's I I didn't right so it's kind of just when you start to realize that what you what you want is what you have, and when you start to be grateful for that, it's like there's just a there's like just a knowing that it's just best to not to not want that or that or that like it's like because you're not seeing all of the all of the all of the parts you're just not seeing all of the parts and then life will show you life will show you exactly why you did not want that thing that you thought you wanted <laughs> yeah it's like knowing that you are knowing that the thing that that you're doing right now is serving you and then being grateful in advance without knowing why it's serving you it's like gratitude from not knowing because you know <laughs> that what you're doing is actually good on some level. And then and then you get and then that energetically it's like that releases whatever tether was tethering you and like there was suffering between you and that thing that you desperately wanted, that kind of like fades and gets gets released and gets cut. Um and then but even that's trippy right because then you then you even start then you go on about your life enjoying what it is that you want and then you life fucks around and shows you why you desired it and that maybe it was for like some higher purpose to benefit beings and then you and that thing come together in the end like <laughs> yeah, everything yeah. Is basically, everything is basically just telling you just to be right fucking here <laughs> Yeah, it's super real. It's like, yeah, you go on this huge transformation and then you look back and you're like, oh, the part where, like, before that I really thought I needed to change and did change was actually really important for me at the time. And, yeah, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, it really is exactly what you said. It's like, yeah, just, just really accepting that, like, what's happening right now is, is the thing and there isn't anything else. 
you know, like nothing's wrong, but nothing could, that, that this having, having fun with, you know, it's so funny what, what I'm looking at my daughter's school books on the desk and what I, what it just sent me to is just kind of like, it, it's kind of like, and it's just what, what if all of the schools it, early in grade school, like mandated a class where it's just, everybody sits down and just like, what if? nothing's wrong right now like what if, wow what if what if everything was really okay like in the world in this and at home like what if everything happening and we just didn't have those combos growing up but it's like what if what if everything really is for real for real okay even with the bill stacking up even with like what if it what if everything is really fucking just okay the way it is yeah, it's like, what What else could it be? Like a hot shot with, you know, a million pounds or whatever. It's like, you gotta fucking, uh, uh, you know, sell some souls to get there. It's like, and you're not willing to do that. So it's not manifesting. Uh, you know, it's like, um, I've had some times because I, I, I do, I do sort of magic from the heart to manifest mm -hmm. what I want. Secrets. And it's like at some point I, I, I was doing it, I was like, wait, there's some dark vibes here. Wait, no, 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 no. I don't want to manifest this. Like, let's keep it nice and like everyone, like good for everyone, benefit for all beings, all that stuff. Yeah. Dude. And like one of the first one of the first things that just came up was like when we are trying to manifest like a relationship. It's like it's fucking yours. But are you down to do what it takes to get that like he's yours she's yours but are you down to do what it takes to to get that or are or are you willing to take everything that comes with that or are you still just like tunnel vision on just like the good sex and the like the few fun times you're gonna have with them are you taking everything into consideration when we start to really talk about everything then it's kind of like you might just be happy with what the fuck you have right now <laughs> you know? yeah you know it's like uh, uh i mean the second the second double truth is, is suffering and it's like everything everything's suffering and you know mm. that's just so true <laughs> <laughs> um like well you know if, if you're doing it to escape suffering it's like that's never gonna be <laughs> it's never gonna work uh if you're doing it for some, I don't know, something else, <laughs> that could work. You know, you're willing to take the suffering uh, with it. Yeah. Uh, and I imagine uh, uh, a child is, is very similar to this whole paradigm. It's like a lot of suffering <laughs> and a lot of uh, yeah. good stuff, too. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what? definitely, right? Nothing is exempt from what, like, nothing is exempt from what is being discussed here, right? Um, suffering included. And I just, when I when I look back, it's kind of like, I, I we just amplify. I had, I amplified so much suffering when I, um, when I perceived some type of um, end result, outcome that included no suffering and was just pleasure. Or like when I was looking at these mentors or these other selves and I was, perceiving that um maybe it was even unconscious right maybe on a conscious level i, totally I didn't agree. truly believe that they were so i i i i there was a i totally i totally there was a time when i, I when i when i assumed that like um get the bliss get the bliss so you don't suffer Get the get, get the bliss so you don't suffer. And then in comes um Ramesh Balsakar. Uh, and one of the most beautiful statements that he made, which actually he didn't come in at this time, it was later on down. But like one of the quotes that he said that was so beautiful, even to this day, of course, is that bliss is the um and this is not verbatim, but bliss is the absence of the desire of bliss. And I was like, you know, well, okay. So that is not what flipped on any switch, but like I, I had, there was an understanding, a resonance with what he was saying. Whereas for a, quite some time and quite, quite a few years, whether I was conscious of it, whether I was aware of it or not, there was this thing where like, 
all this spiritual shit, all of this uh, stuff was like um, gonna, and all the seeking was gonna get me out of like suffering, or I was gonna be suffer free, no suffering for me. Like, got it, I'm done. Like, and and like, yeah, if that's what, you, if that's you, you know. We're kind of fucked if we if we're trying to do anything um to escape or to run from our humanity or or suffering you know what i'm saying yeah uh, and and it's like the 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 chinese uh, zen thing that i always is like no no seeking uh and it's like each one of these is you know spend your whole life doing it um before you can actually do it uh if, even if you can it's like no seeking no clinging uh, uh, no, no avoiding, like no ignoring, like oh, that's some, that's some tough ones. It's like if you're doing any of those, it's bad. <laughs> oh yes, no seeking, no avoiding, no clinging, um, and no ignoring. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that. So what that that's like? It's like <clears throat> it reminded me of something that um someone I love, which is Chogyam Trungpa. Rinpoche, I may have just butchered his name, but you know who I mean. <laughs> he, um, he said something that was really beautiful in this space. It's just like you just raw. You just have to be. It's basically a life is just life is beautifully causing you or unfold. You're beautifully unfolding to be fucking raw, just raw, like <laughs> yeah. Like raw. Yeah, I think there's there's something really real to like sensitivity being equivalent to awareness. And insensitivity being, it's like, yeah, you can be insensitive to a shitload of suffering, but you're also, that makes you insensitive to a shitload of not suffering as well. <laughs> yeah. I remember there was a time when I was really like spiritually tough, like, like, <laughs> like, um, I'm not gonna feel. I'm not gonna feel that thing I feel when you do that thing. Like, or like, like uh, or I'm not gonna budge even though I felt. You know, you know what I'm saying. There was like this, 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 this spiritual, this spiritual, and 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 it's no coincidence that that was a, a probably linearly speaking along the same time where it was like this thing of like projecting like. um uh, I think we went into this in the last reaction that we did to this, where we were talking a little bit about like when when we're more talking at another opposed to um, having compassion for where they're at, right? So it's like they're not asking for this existentially deep as fuck book, but you see them suffering. So you're like throwing the book at them, read that shit. And that's and then, then equating that to being love, right? Um, yeah, it's like it's like it, it's it, there's still something there when we do things like that. That's like um, um, running from those four things that you just mentioned in some way, or or using one of those four things to run from being completely raw when we're doing all of that, right? Yeah, it's like uh, it's almost like being like, hey, like. I've used spirituality to not feel my feelings, and here now you should do it too. And you know the reaction to that's usually like "fuck off, man," and that's what you see on Twitter a lot. <laughs> Someone's like, "Ah, oh, like I just had a really bad day," and they're like, "Oh, who, who, who? What is the I that had a bad day?" It's like "fuck <laughs> off, dude." Yeah, you're not really feeling my suffering here at all. Like you're not connected to your heart. Mm. Yeah, I've definitely been that guy. So bursting myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh god oh gosh i'm having i'm i'm having a bad day who is having a bad day? <laughs> <laughs> well what do you mean who you are not the eye that's having uh, a bad day. yeah yeah i'm embarrassed well, what are you what are you saying what are you saying i should do you to this person who's having a fucking bad day you 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 send them a little text and it's like chant this mantra for 20 minutes and the mantra is like who am i who am i who am i it's like 
but we really but we really feel that we're being like loving and so like there's also compassion on that aspect of us who really thought that we were like really being fucking loving you know but <laughs> it's fucking wild it's wild yeah, I mean, we're all, we're all just trying to relieve our suffering and we're all just trying to relieve other people's suffering too. It's just, um, hmm. when we're not very good at it, then we tell other people things that aren't very good. Yeah, and I think, I guess the piece there is that we're not, you know, th there's not the, the, the understanding that you're able to really, you're, it, it's safe, to, it's safe to, when that person comes to you and they're like, I'm having a shitty day, it's safe for you to go there with them. If they popped into your experience, it's safe for you to go there with them because um, maybe just in talking to them like a friend or whatever, they will benefit from the... <sighs> just from your vibration, from your frequency, from what you're holding because of the... Um, because of, of of what you've been willing to look at within yourself, right? Just 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 trusting more that we can actually go there with whoever pops into our experience that's feeling like a victim. It's like we, instead of shun them, we can actually go there with them because um, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what I can't. What I'm like. <laughs> But yeah, we can go. Let's just start trusting that we can go there with them. If we want to go there with them, we can. And it's going to be okay. And just our willingness to go there with them. Going there with them not being that we see them as a victim, but just because we don't see them as a victim, we're able to go there with them. Right? It's not, not, yeah, it's like, it's like that not, not avoiding thing. It's like not avoiding their suffering. Like, and, and not like, uh, not seeking to, hmm make them like it's like hey stop suffering is like that's what you know what you want to do and it's like it's there it's real it's like let's talk about it like that's a much nicer mm, approach yeah mm -hmm. mm. yeah weren't experiencing any oh, oh no 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 what i was gonna say was because you can go there without going there like you can go there without you can Yeah. But I guess yeah. we don't really stop running. We don't we don't really stop running from other people's suffering until we stop running from whatever comes up. Like until we're 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 down for whatever comes up with uh, within us, then we'll be down for whatever comes up um in in whoever's in our experience, right? It's natural for us to want to run from another person's suffering when we're still running from our own. Yeah, and that's why you know like a lot of there's a lot of like uh, uh teachings which are like, you know, don't don't teach people until you've got somewhere with yourself. It's like, yeah. Otherwise, you're just kind of spreading patterns that are not that effective. Mm -hmm. It's like, by uh, by responding in a pattern of disassociation from suffering, like avoiding it, mm -hmm. then you're not giving them the content of what you're saying, which might be meaningful or useful, which might be like from a teacher or something. You're giving mm -hmm. them the pattern the method of mm -hmm. avoidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Suffering, but maybe there was just, we can underestimate just how much we don't want to fucking suffer, right? So it's kind of like, like I, I amplified so much of my suffering, or so it seemed, um, when I was um, sh seeming to to seek for something that was going to like end the suffering. And then, then in comes, in comes a, a pregnancy and a child. And then it's like, okay, now I have to keep seeking to no longer suffer while also having a child. I felt like, a victim. like this doesn't seem to be uh. working. And then, and then, you, and then you start to realize, Oh, suffering. <laughs> it's like, it's part of the, it's part of the game. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it's it, it is the game really it is the game it is the game you just keep on seeing you just keep on it's just like you feel like a victim you feel like a victim and then you just like oh i'm not a victim and then you feel like a victim but something else happens it's like oh i'm a victim but then it's like oh i'm not a victim it's just like <laughs> constant, constantly 
constantly dabbling with victim or not victim. <laughs> it's weird how the realizations, a new realization is the same realization you had with another thing, but applied to something new. And you can't skip any of the steps. It's like, you always go through the like, oh, like that, it doesn't make any sense. Like I can't break through it. Uh, and then you finally, like, you do, like, a shit ton of work to, like, finally get through, and then you realize, and you're like, oh, this is the same realization that I had with all this other stuff. But yeah. Like, the nature of spiritual practice is that you're never really... Mm, it's always the same thing, but you can't you can't skip any steps to get to the real thing. Oh, that's... that's it's, it's like... It, it, so what just came up is, like, you're in this one relationship with this partner, and you're having these issues, right? And then it's like, well, I'm breaking up with you. Bye. Bye. And then it's not even about whether it's next week or next year. The next relationship, it's like, you think that that shit's... You think <laughs> you think that you skipped anything, but there's there's no skipping steps, right? No skipping steps. Damn. There's no running. There's no way out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The no clinging, no seeking, no avoiding, no ignoring is is very compassionate advice. It's 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 just better. It's like this is really like the thing that I've been doing recently. Is like, it's not that uh, there's some moral obligation, um, as given to you as a mandate by an authority, that this thing is better. It's like it is actually just better to not seek or cling or avoid or, um, ignore. Uh, it is literally like everything. Your body feels better. Your life is better. It's just better, um, and it's like genuinely better. And like that's that's kind of like a hard thing to uh to come to realize. It's like mm, this, and that's that's the thing with meditation. It's like if you're forcing yourself to meditate, it's like you're not really noticing uh or like doing the things for real that are making your experience better which is like coming to terms with that suffering being aware of that suffering yeah yeah it is it is it is it is it genuinely what has made what makes things better for sure is 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 not doing the four things that you mentioned and just plunging you know just going you know straight at whatever it is um <clears throat> not avoiding it just no longer doing what you just no longer doing what you don't want to do and no longer having that conversation that you don't want to have anymore with that person no longer talking to that person anymore no longer yelling or screaming at your child because it feels like shit just no longer doing what it is that that is also right there in in the midst of you suffering the most just 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 no longer doing it um, and then seeing that when we no longer do it, then there's all of this space for us to like see all of the other infinite opportunities available in that, right? Um, and it is fun it, it, because because I guess I guess because in your own in your in your own experience, you start to see well, like fuck, there's no getting there's no getting away from this. It just you just it just has to become fun, right? <laughs> it has to become fun to like explore explore this and explore it with others because it's like it's all we got while we're human <laughs> yeah it's like oh th this is reality and reality is actually kind of fun yeah <laughs> not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah i think that like if, if if we think that we're not supposed to um suffer um, then it's kind of like how how we want expansion, but we don't want suffering, and it's kind of like how like we want we want more um, uh, expanding and love more, but no suffering. It's like how so we just fall in love, we fall in love, we fall in love with ourselves, we fall in and love that with our kids, why... we fall in love with suffering. <laughs> <laughs> that is why. Uh, nope. that... Yeah. That is partial. That is why your kids who annoy the shit out of you are your best friends. <laughs> they are your best friends because they're giving you tons of access to um, to expand. You just tons of opportunities to expand, and that's what we gotta do anyway. That's what we're here. That's what we're doing anyway. And you're the one who manifested them. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a, a, a 
New 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 situations. Uh new situations. Hmm. They're difficult, but there there's a lot of suffering in them, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds fucking crazy. That sounds crazy. <laughs> Uh, oh, we got a silent bit. Yeah, and yeah, uh, uh, I like what you're saying about like no nothing, nothing's excluded. It's like uh, you know, if you, I, I'm guessing, um, yeah, if you want to uh, keep sort of pursuing insight uh, while having a child, it's like you're kind of forced to integrate. Uh, shadow sides that you would able, you would be able to separate before. It's like there's my spiritual side, and then there's all this other stuff, and like we ignore this stuff, and we have all the spiritual stuff here. And I feel like that's like such a normal relationship with spirituality yeah. that people have, where it's like they're not they're not integrating it into their lives or understanding that like it is it is like it's non different from their lives. And and I'm guessing it's like uh yeah sort of integrating being a mother into that equation, it's like you're forced to integrate all of your, your shadow sides. Yeah. Yeah, because... Um... Because on some level, you are your mother. And it's like now you have to work through everything that she did as well. Exactly. <laughs> Dun dun dun. <laughs> yeah. Which is what, yeah. You know, and it can be tricky if there's still codependency with your mother or father who are still alive in, in your experience. Yeah. Um, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because. It is easy to 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 separate the, the your children from from your spiritual the, the side of you that's in the spiritual communities and et cetera. It's easy to do that because especially if you look at how a lot of us were conditioned and a lot of how a lot of us grew up. Like a lot of us grew up um, <clears throat> with, with parent child dynamics that were hierarchy hierarchical. I might be jacking up that word, but like where there was a hierarchy in the parent-child dynamic. This is why I feel it is so easy for us to then, okay, we grow up 30 years later. And it's like, oh, spirituality, spiritual community. This feels good. This looks great. But then it's like, but then when you know, we're at home with our children. It's like, I, I'm in the spiritual community, but you be quiet. Stop talking. Or, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or like you step out the house and it's a spiritual community gathering or you fly to Sedona to have your retreat and it's like, um, and then it's like, but then you go back home into the family and it's like, you did what? Go get the belt. Because, yeah, because yeah. It, it, it's easy. I'm not making fun of it at all. It's fucking easy um, because we grew up, a lot of us grew up where the parent-child dynamic was you are you are less than and I am here and then it was also justified and it's still justified in society um or in the collective conscious it, it's it's still justified because it's like there are so many ways to justify no matter how much you realize certain or read certain spiritual truths and books it's there's still a just justification collectively that okay this applies but when it comes to parenting it's a different thing because they have to you know be, you know what i'm saying because they you have to discipline them and you it's just it's very very easy to um kind of feel as though when you're on this path it can get really tricky with the parent child dynamic and so what you said is like so fucking accurate we're talking about a full integration you know um a full integration because i mean otherwise you're 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 fucked you know um it's like if you're on this path we're talking of when you have a child you're talking full integration or you're going to you're going to be wondering like why do i feel so awesome when i'm not with my child but then when i you know what i'm saying cuz the foundation it's kind of like you've given yourself you have manifested um 
it's like you you wanted to dabble in the spiritual waters and now you fucked around and you manifested a child and now it's like all the fucking way you have no choice and you know and it's a full-on integration and you know it it's just something you can't run from because it's it it ends up being like the foundation it's the same the foundation parent, because hell yeah um like uh, uh, it's all like parent parent child dynamic thing. I'm, I'm sure I can. Yeah, she's back. Yeah, it's My like, head. um, yeah, uh, mm -mm -mm. yeah. Uh, oh, um, wow. uh, look at my face. Sorry, go ahead, Michelle. <laughs> um. So, what I was gonna say right before um I had to respond to my daughter was. It's, it's it's the same thing with the parents, you know what I'm saying, with our parents. And, and what I feel is so beautiful that you mentioned moments ago, I, I hadn't heard it that way exactly before, but we're not that I can remember, but it was when you said something like you are, you are your parent. So it's kind of like um, before you have a child, or even if you don't have your child, it's like you've already given yourself if your if your parents are in your experience, if you're dabbling in the spiritual stuff and and your parents are still in your experience, you've given yourself you've given yourself um, a powerful, powerful um, relationship to um, to utilize in the same way in which that we've spoken about utilizing the parent child dynamic with you and your children, you know. Um, yeah, and it's like the the dynamic, that parent child dynamic, that like way of having a relationship is present in your relationship to parts of yourself, to like friends in like mm, romantic relationships, like and yeah, and then to your parent, it's like, are you the parent? Are you the child? Are you, you know, which which role are you taking? And in, in that sort of way of making a relationship, and like which parts of you are sort of stuck in that paradigm and still kind of suffering because of um the way that it's been formed and like working through that is is kind of like just working through yeah like the shadow shadow stuff yeah and i think that that's you said shadow stuff right before i was going to mention carl young so like i think that's really interesting that you know carl young used to speak about the mother the mother and the father in such a such a brilliant way and he also used to speak on the, the mother specifically in a way where like he would mention her being this, um, you know, like this, 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 the one that you, you really, really fear and like um, in, in this really dark, dark way. And of course he had a point when he was speaking of her in this way, right? And I, I feel like it plays a role into what we're speaking of here uh, about what can kind of happen when you start to transcend your own limiting patterns and beliefs, but are still in the presence of your parents is because, you know, saying it can get kind of dark, dude. <laughs> It's kind of like it's just the same thing. Like when you have children, it can, can it can get it can get dark when you have a child, but in, in a way where it's like you're seeing you're really seeing the the the, the, the patterns that you have embedded from your own childhood and and, and whatnot. But then it, it can get dark equally as dark on the spectrum of you and your parents, because then it's kind of like it's you meeting you. It, it, it's one of you meeting the one that's transcended the, the, the patterns you, you know, and that can get kind of like <laughs> get interesting. Dude. Yeah. It, it's like, a, uh, yeah. Mm. Things don't really like being transcended. <laughs> yeah. Want to uh, stay veiled. And it's like, you can kind of, you can feel it in yourself when you're sort of, you know, that avoiding, thing is kind of like it's almost like the thing that you're being aware of is pushing you away um and it's because because it's it's suffering it's like it knows that if it becomes aware of itself then it's gonna have to deal with its own suffering so it like it like pushes you away and in the same way that like you can see that same thing uh that you get when you're dealing with parts of yourself when you're dealing with other people where you're like you're like starting to become aware. They're starting to become aware of their suffering, and they're like, ah, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, eh. We're doing something but else. Like, 
Yeah, but when you um, and it's crazy because you know with you with with your parents and also with your children, it's like those four beautiful things that you mentioned is like the only way out. It's like for one of you, whether it's your parents or you or you or your children, one of y'all is gonna have to like refuse to ignore, refuse to avoid, refuse to continue doing the things you don't want to do anymore, refuse to, um, I forget what the other ones were, but you just, one of you is going to have to be the one that's just like solid and then everything else will do its thing. Yeah. There's definitely like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of power to just committing to your own. It's like, I'm not gonna, hmm, like s s suffer. Uh, because you're suffering, I'm gonna like stay aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like not, uh, yeah, not seeking, not clinging, not ignoring, not avoiding. Uh, I'm starting to remember them quite well after this uh, podcast. Yeah, but then it's like, but then it's like you can't listen to this and be like, I want that. I want to be solid in that. I want that because then it's like, do you want what comes with that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super, <laughs> it, yeah, it's. Yeah, there's a lot of consequences to, mm, yeah, maintaining awareness of suffering when talking with others. <laughs> they don't like it. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know. I, no, I, I don't think I was hearing that a lot in 2012, 2013, 2014. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't hearing that in 2016 even. I'm like, um, well, yeah, you know, that's not true. That's not true at all, actually. It's been said numerous times. Adi Ashanti straight out the gate in one of the first books I ever read straight up said like destruction dude like it's destruction destruction <laughs> yeah but beautiful oh uh, yeah 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 if 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 my child and my dynamic is off because of my um my feeling like a victim to her and her behavior, then the dynamic I have with my partner is going to be off. Even when it feels great, it's going to be off because you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it, it, it's almost like you Ooh. as a parent on this path. I would like to note that this is like so legit. Like we can sit there and play all day long, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If I if 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 my dynamic with my daughter is thrown off and I feel like a victim to her, but I have a partner and like I'm and, and when I'm with my partner, it looks like everything is all beautiful and blissful. It ain't. It's not. Even if it looks it, it's not. Because it just it just isn't. I'm not even gonna go into because. It just isn't. <laughs> If, 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 including friendships, right? Like if, if my, if, if my, it's just not, it's just not. Um, and of course, clearly that goes for everything, right? If, but, but as far as parent child dynamics is concerned, if, um, if I feel like a victim to my daughter, then I'm going to take, I'm going to take all of that into the friendship. I'm going to take that into the relationship. I'm going to take that everywhere because it's not about my daughter. It's not her fault while I feel like a victim, right? So until I start to investigate that, all of my relationships are going to be um, fucked or suffer, full of suffering, the minimum. Yeah, it's just like, uh, uh, it's almost like uh, the, um, it's almost like an energetic thing. Where it's like, uh, if there's if there's a part of you that's conducting relationships in a certain way, then that that affects all of you. It's interconnectedness. It's like yeah, just because it's like it seems like one relationship is different to another, it's like actually like all the patterns are just repeating and active, um, in in a much more uh, a non-linear way than we can understand. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you the parent-child dynamic is foundational. So if you go ahead and really work with that dynamic and, and um, work with the suffering in that dynamic and, and play around with some methods, et cetera, et cetera, and start to have fun with it, because fuck, you need some fun with it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> If you start to have fun with it, then, then you're gonna take all of that into every other relationship that you, 
that you have. Um, maybe, you know. That's, that's maybe. Be beautiful. Uh, and I feel like that's what you're, you're, you're pointing to sort of like the, the fractal, or that almost like the fractal nature where it's like your relationship with your parents uh, is like the relationship with your child, which is also the relationship with you to like parts of yourself that you don't, uh, that you're treating, you're treating like a child. Uh, like, so there's like an internal culture and then there's like an external culture in your immediate relationships. And then there's like a past culture. Uh, and it's almost like spirituality isn't about um, transcending uh, uh, each of these things it, it, as much as it is like noticing that these patterns are present in almost all of our like thoughts and and ways of being and yeah finding some way to uh integrate them or or re or, or transmute them or sort of uh reorganize them in ourselves and and in our external relationships in our day-to-day -day, and also like in our past and and uh by like doing doing that kind of work it's like um you know it's not it's not just uh as simple as sort of like a conceptual change of like oh you know i just don't believe in parents or children anymore it's more like you know time to like dig through um, as well as like all of my past stuff and all of my present stuff and all of my current stuff sort of like the whole human history of of like how families and tribes and uh and and like family and and patriarchy has sort of existed and like that's kind of what you're up against uh when you when you really get into it i feel like it's like you're, you're never um like truth truth uh uh is able to be in operation in a functional way but it doesn't just apply to one part of your life where it's like oh just you and your child it applies to every part of your life all, all at once like you and your child you and your parent uh every other person's child every other person's parent uh uh you know every other person's uh uh you know uh patriarch like almost like um like get having those kind of relationships with like teachers or whatever uh you know it's uh as well as that even as well as that it's like the material systems like the real world like systems that are being created and that we participate in also have that like uh those like thought structures embedded in them because they were created by those by those thought structures and not in a like like a metaphorical way it's like literally when you're interfacing with like a uh a, like a company that has been built into like you know like the sort of father is superior like obedience mindset then you're you're like participating in that sort of universal pattern yeah the only the only time that something's actually working is when it's working for everything <laughs> yeah yeah, <clears throat> for fucking sure, for sure. Wow, have we been going for forty minutes? No, thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, still, right? <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I like myself. Um, <laughs> I don't talk about one one last thing. Uh, uh, uh maybe not more. Maybe more. <laughs> um keep forgetting it whenever it comes up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned being sort of intuitive and uh things c coming through. Uh How long ago was that? A uh, years ago we talked about intuitive and things coming through. I didn't even know that's crazy. <laughs> Aeons ago, uh, that came up. That's crazy. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, uh, and it's like, uh, for me, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on <laughs> all the time? <laughs> but yeah, I'm curious what your relationship is to sort of this, um, sort of like channeling, channeling, channeling role, almost like, <laughs> uh, uh, and this idea of like being guided or, or you know, it's like it's not it, it's not that you were um, you weren't able to like write a book. Bless you. Um, it's that 
uh you know it had to they had to it had to come through at like the right in the right way at the right time and like mm -hmm. it, yeah so it's, it was more about like the universe than than you yeah. I'm curious about how you how you feel about all that kind of stuff well it's just kind of like um like following my heart and like just just faith and um trusting that having faith that when i'm inspired to write something going with that instead of letting something say no or blah blah, blah you know <laughs> going with that and then like being like wow okay that was cool and then seeing like oh it's probably not just for you and then like noticing that like there's a community of women that you have on an email list and that you work with and it's like having faith that it didn't just come through in divine timing for you but it was probably going to benefit others at the exact same time with the moment that you send it so it's kind of like just a ridiculous amount of faith in 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 timing and in 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 what you're inspired to do and um going with that and then the more that you you continue to go with that the more that you continue to see through the responses of your other selves <clears throat> that um oh yeah okay like <laughs> keep going with that <laughs> so yeah it's so real it's like um it's like every single thought that i have uh seems to be uh guidance of some sort and like i've got i've got to the point now where it's like if i have the same thought twice i'm like okay like okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, it's like why not? Like let's just see what happens. And it, it, it you know, ideally, uh, I I think what it is, you know, it's like if you're in alignment with your heart, and, and this is kind of like if you want synchronicities, this is what you do: is literally every single thing that comes up, you treat like you just trust it, and then you follow it, and you, you just end like up. A... Mm. Go, 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 sorry. Yeah, you just you just get led to something which is synchronous and meaningful for you because it's it's like the universe isn't giving you random thoughts. Like everything everything matters and like the more you just learn to trust that and like trust that it's gonna take you somewhere good, the more it does. Mm -hmm. It's like treating all of that that you just mentioned, all of those inspirations, all of those um especially those 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 inspirations or thoughts that repeat themselves to for you to act on or whatever, treating them all like you just saw 11, 11, five times in a row, like treating all of it, treating all of it with that type of, um, like seeing it all as the, the being divine, divine as fuck. Like taking, taking a chance on that inspiration being divine as fuck and beneficial for you and beneficial for, for all because it's beneficial for you, you know? Sure. Like it, like, um, I guess we can get caught up in in, in in the earlier stages or whatever. We can get kind of caught up in how um, nothing's happening here. There's nothing happening. There's nothing. There's no one. Who are you? Who am I? You know what I'm saying? Who's speaking? So I'm gonna sit down and be quiet for the rest of my life. You know, we can get caught up on how like nothing is happening, but then it's like there's also the fact that at the same time, like if there's nothing, and then 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 the, at the same time there's everything. So it, you. This conversation means jack shit. It means nothing, nothing. But then it also means everything. It is everything. It is like, it is extremely divine, it's extremely synchronistic, um, extremely beautiful, ex all of that, just as much as it's the opposite, right? And it's just seeing that everything that comes through you and, and comes to you to do and, and you feel inspired by and thoughts and all of that it's not all nothing it could also be equally very much so something very much so something yeah and, and you know often i'll like get something come through and i'll be like that's weird like i don't really understand where i'd do that and there's some like doubt but then it always ends up being oh it's like oh because that because of, like a specific person need to see it in this way that's why like i use that those words you know then there's no there's no thoughts <laughs> and then if as you, if you go out of alignment you you have like a thought which is like hey you could do this which would be good and then and then you can go back in, and then like the more you go out it's like the more the thought repeats and it's like no go, go back to doing the other thing and you're like, okay i'll go back to doing it um 
That said, I feel like there's also like space for like uh, just for sort of receiving messages from from whatever, uh, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. if you're not mm -hmm. out of alignment. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's some high level shit. I was saying just there. Yeah, so like you're always always in this sort of unborn, non arising state, and it's like going away from that is the same as having a thought telling you to like return to it on some level it's like as soon as you're like no like it's not synchronistic it's like what actually it is yeah you just have to trust it yeah gosh because it's like if we're not trusting that then are we then it's it's like if we're not trusting that that as long as we're incarnate and as long as we're in a human body right if we're not trusting that then we're gonna trust the same situation happening through a different human instead of what's happening through us in that same way. It's like, why would we put somebody else in that, in, in that position when nobody else is here to do what you're here and capable of doing? Cause you, there's only you, there's only one you here. I mean, the, like, I'm not speaking in like the, I mean, I'm speaking in the micro, like there's really only one hand Joe, like, you know, there's one hand, there's only one Michelle. So it's like, if, if I'm not trusting that, um the process so to speak within myself then that just leads me to trust it from from somebody else and to put that that's not what's happening through another with their thoughts and whatnot is not what's meant to happen through me unless i make that the case but um. <laughs> yeah it's, it's super real that like spirituality you know you don't need anyone else or anything else uh, you don't need even a thought uh to get it all uh, immediately yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and so i think like that right and like it's going to be like unique for each individuation of all that is how they balance how we balance the um the the thoughts that you want to ignore and then the ones that are divine like coming to you you know what i'm saying the mess the messages and um yeah then there's like a little excitement that plays a role for sure in like some of those, some of those ones that repeat themselves. There's like a little excitement to doing it, you know? And like, when you do it, you're like, there was a time when like a thought would have fucked up you doing that. Like a fear would have fucked up you, you hopping on that um, and intuitively sending that email, right? But, but yeah, when you, when you start having fun with following your heart, I think it's like doubt is really the only thing stopping you from like experiencing a synchronistic amazing existence in every moment just yeah. the doubt the just the doubt, doubt. Mm. And it's so funny when you see people like oh you know a bunch of doubting people weren't able to experience this so it's not real it's like no the doubt is the thing that stops them from experiencing it yeah i think that's you came in to my experience at like a most divine and beautiful time. And um, <clears throat> like I introduced to myself through you, just the, uh, I think at that time you were really big on like, have fun. This is great fun, <laughs> great fun you know? And like, I remember back then I was like, I mean, it's cool. What? <laughs> I think I'm, Fuck, I, I don't, up. I need, I just said back then, and it made me go, that was just like December. <laughs> Holy shit. What the fuck? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's not long ago, huh? But it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like just four or five. It's 10 years ago, 10 years ago. <laughs> uh to play around with the fun part <laughs> again and um so yeah definitely definitely just having more fun with all of this that we're discussing you know having fun finding a way to have fucking fun with following your inspiration following your heart um like the fun and intuitive kind of go hand in hand like probably not being intuitive if it's not fun <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Even if it's like a long book that you're writing, probably not being intuitive if it's not um, if it's not fun. And so that goes back to the book that I wrote 
um, March to July that I'm not deleting, but definitely going to keep up. They're very beneficial with the practices and et cetera. Just and and just just the just the message, the ultimate message of the book, right? But it's like. <clears throat> Um, because there was more clarity that came after the fact between then and now, more clarity, more fun, more, more, more clarity. So, so just more intuitively guided, um, as far as like, um, inspired messages, et cetera. So just going to add that to it because, um, it's not that writing it initially was not fun, but there was still a lot that was being cleared from my system at the time, you know, um, so what's going to be added to it is, is very, very obviously coming from a much more clear and um, a fun place. <laughs> like <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Like, a, a, like fun as an aspect of a clear, clear channel uh, or like purity. I really like that. Um, okay. I think we can uh, call it for this uh, side of the podcast. We can do a reaction wow. now. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I. Oh. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, okay. Wow, Michelle, what a journey. <laughs> I know. I was drinking. I drank the coffee the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I mean, it was only it was only uh, 38 minutes, the original recording, if you would believe that. Uh, we just pop off when we when we start reacting to ourselves. That's when we're flourishing, it seems like. I mean, I don't know how long this was, but. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, she, I put it. It was like at uh, three. Oh, three, three hours. We've been here. Uh, what? <laughs> All right, let me just uh, stop recording. Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh. <laughs> oh, I was still. We're still recording. <laughs> <laughs>